We're here with uh, the great John Brangus. I want to start this podcast off with, first of all, just uh, thanking everybody for writing these great emails about my quote unquote skin uh, mm-hmm. screaming. Oh, it's almost over, everyone. Yeah, I'm and, with and, you. And, and I went to, sick of your health. I went shit. to the dermatologist, <laughs> and you know, he was like, the nurse told me one thing. The dermatologist goes, "What?" He goes, "No, I don't want you to stay out of the sun. It's just something you got. You got a spot." From a sunburn that I took off. It's not yeah. the kind of metastasizes. It's a fucking mark. You know, these nurses tell you stuff. So there are people out there who are battling real With cancer. Real issues. They're real, real cancer. Issues. And, and like my, my dear friend Cassie reached out to me. I want to thank her. And she's dealing with issues that are far more uh, complex and serious than some bullshit that I'm talking yeah, about. Did you feel like an asshole when you thought you had real skin Well, I cancer? did think I did. I was very nervous I about it. I knew you fucking did I, it. Did you? I knew it. Did you? I was at a party did, and I, everyone I goes, what's going on? And I go, nah, nothing. Brian thinks he has skin cancer. They go, oh my God. I went, no, no, no. If you know no, Brian, it, he's fucking no. crazy. But no, it is. I do have Like his knee hurting. Like, dude, I think no. like, did you get a, you got an amp- amputate, 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 man. Your, yeah, you got a pain in your stomach walking out going, I've got skin cancer on my back. I did have the worst of I do have squeeze. Then I meet him at Starbucks, yeah, and he has—he yeah, 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 no. looks like a fucking beekeeper. Like, what the <laughs> fuck are he's, you he's doing? Still laughing his ass he's up. like this. Yeah, I, they told me I can't be in the sun. Like, I can't yeah. Meanwhile, the, the doctor was like, "No, no. I want you in the sun. Yeah. Uh, don't be ridiculous. Just wear sunblock." And I was like, "I know, but I got the." He goes, "Listen to me. I took off a tiny piece from probably you got a couple bad sunburns or maybe a hundred sunburns, and yeah, it's relax. It's not the end of the world. You got dark too. How I well because no, when you hear cancer, I get a text, cell, dude. Cancer? It's making me realize a lot of stuff. You know, I gotta get going, man." Shut I, I, just, not, I even, just start living my I life. I was all yeah, right. from that bump on your yeah. back. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, man. Thinking about traveling, you know. Yeah, yeah, some yeah. Stuff, yeah right. Man. How did your no, did How did our that. grandparents do it? Like, how did they actually? My grand, grandfather lived till ninety three. They man the fuck up, life. John. They were like, oh, look, I just have a bump on my back that's discolored. Yeah. He never got it taken off. You want it. Whatever. My grandma has a fucking wart <laughs> on her face with tears <laughs> jumping out. She doesn't give a fuck. Yeah. So when I hear you say you went this fancy no, doctor, like kids, go, I went, no, what? No, that's stupid. Now you got. You should go. And I, de- yeah. I definitely had something. It was. It was squeamish. Self, it's but a little defensive about this. No, that's a yeah. fact. No, Brian Callen, cancer what I'm survivor. I'm saying you fucks. <laughs> what I'm saying you we need motherfuckers. Start foundation. Shut up. What I'm Lance saying. Armstrong. What I'm saying is that. All I got to do is take something like that off, and, it, and what this this kind of stuff is so small and beginning. But it could I, be a big deal be, if yeah, you don't try it. Yeah, if you it. let it go. But hey, but yeah. also, you don't Lance Armstrong comedy. I'm proud of you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you don't Lance Armstrong also, comedy. Also, careful how you listen to fucking nurses. It's just like, dude, hey, don't give me half information, all right? Well, no, anyway. the, the protocol now is, well, here's my sheet. And I need to check my boxes because the doctor said oh, X, fuck. right? They'll look at you and say, uh, your levels are low. Here is medicine or here is an herb or here is a whatever. A and the nurses path. just have to play right along. Like They've lost their autonomy. Oh, how about this? I get the, the nurse who says, when I, talk, I call him, I got to go for my, you, you go for a checkup. I'm 50. Right. I haven't had a checkup in two years. I'm fucking lazy about that stuff. I go to get my checkup. And uh, well, I take, they take 11 vials of blood to see if I'm glu- glucose intolerant. It turns out this is a Beverly Hills right. kind of, you know, integrative medicine doctor. Mm-hmm. He's a medical doctor. Oh, yeah, okay, Meanwhile, the fucking, I, I got one. Yeah. I'm going to a regular Western doctor. The fucking <laughs> nurse goes, well, you got abnormal blood, um, uh, an abnormal blood uh, sort of profile. profile. Yeah. And I'm like, I call Brendan. I go, what the fuck, bro? He goes, hey, dude, like, trust me. It's probably some bullshit. I get in there. It's bullshit. <laughs> I, I, they'll, they'll find anything. Yeah. Magnesium. Your zinc is off the charts. Here, take this. Uh, right. Listen, and all you do is subscribe. It's going to be five thousand dollars a month. Yeah. Now, for your health, is it worth it? I'm like, yeah. I yeah. guess. I you, left with a bunch of shit, a bunch of herbs. I'm like, what? And I threw them all out. And by the way, my cholesterol was a little, like maybe a little high. Well, I had eaten right before that. I had eaten f- a pound of bacon, a bunch of eggs. Dude, you're healthy it, as fuck. You're so healthy. You're so right. healthy. If Do I ever have that's energy why, issues? Never. That's why when you tell me this stuff, I'm like, oh. You're like, oh my God. So you're, would you take your car and drop it off at a mechanic and say, something's wrong with it. And you think they're going to call and say, we didn't find anything. That's a yeah. great it's, point. You know, like there's nothing for us to do. We'll hold your car here until you come. They're yeah. going to be like, oh, the fan belt is busted. Oh the transmission and your spark plug. Of like, course. Of course. And you know what you else did? They, like, doctors make money off a lot of times. A lot of, a lot of times they can do this, especially the Hollywood doctors, uh, Beverly Hills doctors. Right. I'm not saying I love most doctors are great people. I'm not saying. But there's a business to be made where you – you can play on people's fears where you can – there are lots of tests you can do where people's lead or their mercury Always. is higher. And but B, look where you're at. Like in Beverly Hills, right. like a lot – and I'm not saying you know, that they're bad people. A lot of people in that 
area, because, and I'll get to the point here, but in that area have so much money that it's yes. just like, yeah, all right, do yes. your thing, man. Like I uh, dropped off my Bentley at the Bentley Deer in Beverly Hills. I had to get the, the general checkup. And they told me the price, and I went, you know, I'm from Aurora. What? I'm not from Beverly Hills. I went, what the fuck? For an oil change? What the fuck? And the guy goes, bro, looks at me square in the eye. This white English dude goes, bro, you're in Beverly Hills at the Bentley dealer. You think everyone, anyone gives a shit what we charge for oil? That's so true. <laughs> he was like, he listened That's to the so podcast. True. I went, right. fuck, man. I he guess, goes, I, dude, I, he goes, you don't buy a Bentley and worry about oil changes. I went, I guess, I guess you don't. I, 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 I want to even bet. There's a guy, there's a guy who's famous. I won't go in, but he's got famous clients who I happen to know go there. Right. And uh, he's a kind of a celebrity doctor. My buddy goes there. His friend, she's this really pretty girl. She goes, I don't go there anymore. And uh, he goes, why? <laughs> he goes, this dude, he works, by the way, I think he works with his wife too. And he goes, uh, he looks at her and she's really hot. And they, they go out, he go, takes her out for a health consultant consultation. Right. And he looks at her and he goes, you need to start using your sexual power to heal other people. Ooh. And he's Mr. sitting closer Steel, your and closer. Dr. Mr. Yep. Steal your girl. <laughs> she realized this guy, and then the guy makes a hard pass at her, as in a touching hard pass. And she's like, this guy's a fucking fraud. Right. And then she starts reading it up on it, and then she's like, "This guy, anyway." It, so it's reflective. You got to use culture. your sexual power to right. heal. It's, it's not even I use that. It's role. reflective of the culture that we live in now, right? Because we have this just influx of tremendous amounts of data, and what are you going to do with this data? Everyone's really obsessed with these genetic testing. You know, oh, like, dear. oh, I could tell you we what you're likely to cause, like what yeah. you're likely to die from. What are you going to do about that actual information? You're going to die by some freak accident. Yeah, like, good chance. Well, right, here's that's you, the chance. Here's that's what you, more than likely what's going to happen. Here's what you with all the think. athletes that you deal with. Do you see a lot of them talking more? Because it's you know you have your new podcast right. and you have all these. I mean, legit. I mean, superstar guest athletes from comedians. Yep. I was on there. Way more famous people than Brian and I that's on right. there. But that's right. <laughs> but do you see them, especially because a lot of them are retired? more issues about their, they're more aware of health and like what they signed up for. Like you had Ray Lewis on, right? Absolutely. Ray Lewis. Drops on Monday. We're going to get yep. into this. We're going to get into when this. When you had Ray Lewis on, does Ray, I'm always so, I guess, intrigued by, does Ray think anything of brain trauma, CT? Is he aware of it? He is. So what's interesting about uh, athletes today is that they have more information than ever, right? Yeah. They, I mean, and at an earlier at an earlier age. Not only that, the problem is you can go on the internet. So if you if you get the biggest mistake I made was, oh, you have squamous cell. I went on the internet and looked at pictures. Right. Bad Bro, idea. that it'll fuck you up for I was like, Bad this idea. is what I have? Well, they show you the most extreme cases that have been left for uh, five years. Right. But right? to, to so back to Ray, kind of, but like with, kind of with Mike so, Dick, uh, if you've heard him, who's a great, he goes, man, if I knew the repercussion of football, I would have never signed up for it. There's a lot of that sort of sentiment. Um, and I, I, you know, I don't know what the exact breakdown is, but there's there are quite a few players, former players, who feel like, you know what? Had I known what I know now, I wouldn't play. But then on the other side, there are the players that say, you know what? I still would have done it because the friendships, the bonds, the coming into being a man, that's the way that I did it. And that was the road that I took. I think so that's the majority. The majority the would ma say that. I think a majority of players like, yeah, look, I still would have done it. I made a ton of money. Had a lot of fun, but I grew as a person. So when I played football in college, it wasn't about football as much as it was becoming a man. A lot like, of guys don't want to talk about it, though. Yeah. Like, a lot, like a lot of fighters, they, they don't even entertain the idea. Why? They might be compl conflicted on it, and also this is what they do. I mean, do we want a country? Do you want America without football? Well, do you want to, do you want to raise a child and say, don't do anything where you might bump your head? Yeah. I mean, why is the NFL being singled out so much? When boxing, MMA, hockey, because boxing and MMA, we knew it, and they go, you know what the fuck you signed for? Uh, NFL. Roger Goodell tried to hide it. I th th that would be the argument. The yeah. the counter argument to that is because when it's all good, baby. No, right. look, we we don't we haven't seen any signs of it, and everyone's like, all right, we'll just keep running into each other, I, I guess. So when I played football, so I'm 45 now, and I played football in high school, and I was this you know tiny kid going to go against giant behemoth you know, uh, uh, high school schoolmates, yeah. right? High schoolers. But the drills that you would do of the kiss drill, mm -hmm. Oklahoma, I mean, the, Oklahoma, the kiss drill. I mean, you'd be arrested. 
right? If you were yeah. like, What's what the did you kiss have drill? We used to do the kiss drill. This was Why literally called the kiss, kiss drill. drill. It was it was lining up and just going helmet to helmet with the person across from you. <laughs> just literally bang, bang. It was like you gotta toughen up your head. Concussion like, drill. Yeah, it was called the yeah, concussion drill. I was fourteen drill. years was old and drill. I did that for one fucking J V season in boarding school and I went, This hurts my head so much. <laughs> See ya. I remember it's the only thing I've ever quit in my life. I said to my father, I go, I'm quitting. He goes, What? I go, I don't want to play football. No. It's too cold. It's too cold in New England. I'm not built for it. I have no, I, and I go, I quit. And he was like, all but, right. But when you went across, so like in high school, getting knocked out and seeing stars and, oh, I saw the blue dot. Right passage. I, yeah. And it was like a, a, yeah, look, this is my badge of honor. Mm-hmm. You know, like, hey, I, I did something where I got knocked out or I blacked out or I saw stars. No one in the 80s was saying, oh, man, we got to put you in a concussion protocol. Right? No one was saying that. But it's the... My my point on concussions, like okay, so now we all know about it, but it's not just an NFL issue; it's an all sport issue. What about X Games? I mean, the, mm-hmm. the amount of force that these athletes are hitting their head on the ground or the lip of a ramp, I mean, is far beyond what a football. But it's, would we kind of know that though. With X Games, like, all right, if you're going to take a motorcycle and do a 360 and land on your head, you're going there's going to be some issues. Like with football, I think the the thing is is you have little kids doing it. Like we don't have little kids doing the X Games stuff. Right. In football, you have little oh, kids doing wrong. it. That's wrong. The X Games stuff is early. I live in Park City now. Yeah. I mean, it's. Uh, but I just think, I, I think you're to your point, Brennan, is that it's good to have this information. And it's, now that you. And we've had people like Matt Matrion and guys who are, yeah. played pro football who said they wouldn't let their kid as their brains are developing. They wouldn't let their kids play Pop Warner. They wouldn't let their kids play tackle football until they were 16 or whatever. Because, and so the more information you, might well you have... Too, you might as well not even play. Yeah, Be, it's, too, it's too late. Here, I don't agree with that. Like if, you, if you're down to let them play at 16, you should just let them play. Well, uh, if you look at a lot of NFL players, here's, here's the, the, the big message. First of all, you need to play a different sport every season. Yes. Like all the Don't great focus. athletes, yes. right, are multi-sport athletes. You can't focus on one sport, whether it's football or basketball or baseball. Even though people say, "Oh no, it makes now you it's better. all specialized." Dude. Yeah, you play all, year round. It's specialized, it's and idea. of course, those kids that play all year round are going to be awesome when they're thirteen. Mm. But the question is, is when they're nineteen, longevity are they are they much better in baseball? They're throwing a ball since they were five all year round. Like that's why you see this explosion in Tommy John surgeries. Yes. it's because they're just doing it too much if you look at football my argument is i don't think football is going anywhere personally i don't think like the league is going to explode i don't think it should and i don't think it will because what's going to happen is the talent pool that they're drawing from mostly is not you know people with private coaches and it's it's really kids that say this is my way out of where i am Correct. that's a large percentage of the sure. pool that they're and the juice from. is worth the squeeze for them it is yeah. they're like well what, like what else am i going to do am mm-hmm. i going to especially if you're th- built like, like a certain way like if exactly. you're exactly like, but to that man. point if you if you know the the risk of football and let's say i'm this freak athlete i'm like god well i could just go play baseball and not deal with any of this or i could go do this sport and instead of but you do the that. statistics on the towns that they're growing that you know an underprivileged kid right even is saying look which way am i going to get out if there if football is the thing to do and that's the spotlight you're going to play football did, did you see um the it's uh on vice lance vice lance sports sat my boy sal did it and it's this um it's kind of near dade county in florida yep. and they have the most percentage of nfl players come out of there it's a small little county and football it when i say this is Life. It's a religion. It is life. And the guy who started it, he started this like uh, Pee Wee program. And you watch it. I'm like, the level of football those little kids are playing is insane. Insane. So let me tell you, do you want to get into some stories that I have from the new podcast? Yeah, so John's got this podcast called Brink of Midnight yep. that hit, that drops... It drops Monday. on Monday, May fifteenth. Yep. Brennan, right? you both, you have, you both sub- Brennan and I have done it, but you've had some forty-one people to date, yep. like Ray Lewis, who you're going to kick it off with, who yep. I know you're we really close with. Ray Lewis and Rob Riggle and Marshawn Lynch and you know yeah. Doctor Drew and Diana Nyad, who swam from Cuba to Florida, and Randy Couture. Love and it, man. Lots of, I mean, forty-one. I got to awesome hear about guests. the woman who swims, and I got to hear about Ray Lewis. No, yeah. you, you, you got to hear I, about San Antonio those. Holmes. No, Rob Riggle is the story. I, you and I, when I was doing yep. this, you shared a story about who I love, Rob Riggle. The story talking about Rob Riggle is the most fascinating one. You will. But let's get into the. He's got the, a lot of football. fascinating stories, sir. So the podcast is called the Brink of Midnight Podcast with John Brinkus, where we explore the moments when everything changes. At midnight? 
in that state. Well, so if you say brink of midnight, right, it's right before the carriage turns into a pumpkin. It's like life gotcha. is going to go one way or the other at midnight. So yep. there are these events that happen in life where your life was trucking right along and then everything changed from that point forward. For me, it was meeting my wife on a plane, sat next to her on a plane in Denver. We fell instantly in love, love at first sight. Turns out that we lived two blocks away from each other on the same street in Brentwood. You called me, I remember. That's crazy. Right. I went to your house directly from the airport. Yeah. I walked into I just Brian's found, house. I just met, literally, <laughs> dude, literally. I just met the girl I'm going to marry. Jesus I'm in Christ. love and it's over. Game over. I went, bro, you're a cyborg. What are you talking about? How, that, yeah. that changed your love life, though, but not No, it changed. Oh, it changed everything. Really? So, yeah, that was 14 years ago. It changed <clears throat> the trajectory of not only my personal life, but my professional life. Yeah. Just the, the energy that all of a sudden was bestowed upon me because of this connection that I made with Lizzie, my wife, changed everything. It literally, from decision-making in business of like, should I do this or do that? Now I had a partner who is, fortunately so for me, smart. she's- much smarter she's than so I am. Fucking, Much well, better looking. I don't know. She Smart went to Harvard health. and Princeton. She got a graduate degree <clears throat> from yeah. Harvard, from, from yeah. Princeton. Undergrad Princeton, grad, graduate oh, degree from, from Harvard. Oh, graduate from Harvard. She speaks three languages, including she runs Mandarin. She ultra marathons. <laughs> she has, speaks three languages. And she's, and she's a dancer have little and a singer. Babies? Yeah. Dancer and singer. And their brains just come out. Just, <laughs> just huge brains. Yes. She's they, really pretty and, and super athletic. And can sing. And she and can sing. We had and we like had so well. the, the brink of midnight comes from us not only meeting but also realizing, wow, we can make music together. So we we wrote a Christmas song on a total total fluke. Yeah. I was just playing guitar, teaching myself Pro Tools, wrote a song. She walks by, is singing a tune over it. I'm like, where did this come from? She said, I was classically trained in the Long Beach Opera Company. I've told you this How fifty times. I'm like what? Yeah. So we start. So we start writing songs together. We put out a Christmas song, and it ended up charting. It literally was number thirty on the charts. It was like Madonna, Bruce Springsteen, <laughs> Lizzie and John Brinkett. <laughs> literally, Bing it's a good Cosby. song. Like it's a oh good my song. god, you said it to me, and I was like, who's singing? You go, my wife. I go, she's singing. She sounds like Natalie Merchant. <laughs> I'm like, oh my god. So we no, formed. She's a, she's a badass. She's, she's a high performing badass. Lizzie is a badass, and she's really the really the brains behind Brink of Midnight of saying, look. We're going to make a band and we're going to have a podcast that's talking about these moments in everyone's life where things change. So we were talking about football. Let me give you a great football story. So Santonio Holmes is, was one of our, or is one of our guests. Santonio Holmes grew up in the third poorest county in Florida. And when he was 11 years old, he had five brothers and sisters, all from different fathers. And he was essentially the patriarch of the family. He was raising these kids. And he said, you know what? When he was 11, he said, this, I cannot achieve greatness if I'm a dad at 11. So he went to his grandmother and said, there is greatness inside of me that I need to tap into, but I won't if I'm a father. She said, you come to church with me. You follow the way. I got your back. And he said, that moment when I was 11 changed the course of my life. And he, he said, the catch in the Super Bowl, that's just a culmination of everything from the point that I was 11. Mm-hmm. Because I could have gone down. he getting ready for that moment his whole life. Right. He's like, that, he's like that, that doesn't even, he's like, that doesn't make my list of things that changed my life because that's just something I did that I was supposed to do. Yeah. He's like, I was supposed to catch that ball. But I could have gone down bad roads where I was growing up, but I didn't because of my grandmother on that one day. That county, and because of his success and others, this tiny little place, tiny little place, under 20,000 people, tiny little place has spawned 35 NFL players. That's the place I'm talking about. It's, it's crazy. It's actually, actually refers to as the muck. And it's, it's when, you listen to the, when you listen to the full podcast and hear his entire story, you just can't help and, and, and say there are moments in everyone's life where it's this way or that way. And if he hadn't gone on that day, on that time to his grant, he's like, who knows where I would be? Yeah. Who knows? And it's amazing how everybody has that story. Everybody has well, what that about moment. Ray Lewis? Are you talking about this? So, yeah, Ray Lewis. First of all, Ray and I, I cannot tell you the, connect, the instant connection we had when I met him the first time, which was season two um, of Sports Science, where I met him. He just, we just immediately clicked, and he is so incredibly authentic. And I'm telling you, he's here doing God's work. 
the, the, Ray Lewis is one of the most inspirational people I have ever met. I've heard that. So he is so he was telling me, and part of the story in in the podcast um, that airs on Monday is literally. I just got off the phone with him. It's like literally the Ray Lewis that nobody knew before you knew Ray Lewis. Yeah. These are the moments that actually shaped him. He's like winning a Super Bowl <laughs> twice and being MVP and all that. That doesn't make my list of the moments that changed my life. He, one of the key moments, he was 14 years old and he had, um, he was, he, his, his father was gone and it was just, he had a single mother and his mother had a boyfriend who was not treating her well. And Ray said, give me a deck of cards and got a deck of cards from his mom, went into his room and literally for six months to a year, he would throw down a card and it would be a jack and he would do 10 push ups. Throw down another card. It would be a four. He'd do four sit-ups. He said, I would do thousands of push-ups and sit-ups every day just to become strong enough to make sure that I was big enough and intimidating enough to get that guy out of my house. Mm. I mean, how long did that take? Yeah. It was like, Two weeks? Yeah. 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 Whooped that grown man's it, it ass? Was, yeah. it was, 14, he was probably yeah. already a beast. It, it is amazing. And when you, when you tap into these moments, he's like, that's where I took my life and my mom's life into our own hands, mm-hmm. into our own control. Yeah. I didn't sit back and allow myself to be a victim. I said, you know what? I can do something about this. What can I do as a 14-year-old kid? He's like, and I wasn't a big kid then. He's like, I had to figure out a way to make sure that I was able to protect I used mom. to always wonder about him. I would watch his intensity and how he would get ready for games yep. and how he would talk to the team. And there was, like, I don't know too many people that are more built. I always say like you're built for war, like built for battle, like built for like his mentality, his ability to keep that intensity. It was his passion. It was his passion. That's what separates him. Oh Oh, yeah. And and it's because athletically like he's not, he wasn't the fastest guy. He wasn't the biggest, biggest or fastest. Mm -mm. Right. And he's arguably the greatest defender of all time. And his passion, focus and energy leadership, he could lead men yeah. into battle. Yes. He could bring greatness out of people, yeah. including himself. Mm-hmm. And his expectation for greatness was he really looks at the world of you need to achieve greatness by seeing it, doing it, wanting it, practicing it in every facet of your life, not just football. He's like, that's not just that's so not he's, he's disciplined in every aspect in of his life. every aspect. He's like, you need to practice greatness yeah. to be great. And it's. It's such an honor to not only have met him, but become good friends with him. Did he talk about his relationship with Shannon Sharp when Shannon Sharp came to the Baltimore Ravens? You know what? We didn't get into the professional playing days oh, gotcha. because those weren't the moments that changed his life. Yeah. So they, our podcast. Is that a complicated on. relationship? No, not at all. No, no, no. Close? At all. No. Yeah. So Shannon Sharp, you know, everyone knows Shannon Sharp, all-star tight end. Yeah. One of the, he's a Hall of Famer now. But he was a guy who kind of, he set the pace for the Denver Broncos. And then when he got to Baltimore, yep. he was the guy who set the pace and showed Ray Lewis, Ed Reed, and these guys how to like really tune it in and focus. So he would get to practice early. He would get he was in the weight room early. He would take yep. those guys through a workout, just crazy stuff. I'm talking about Ray Lewis, Ed, yep. Ed Reed. And then uh, his diet was the biggest thing because I guess before he got there, their diets were kind of loosey goosey. And you know how it is in the yep. NFL. Shan Sharp doesn't do that. He had mm-hmm. meals, and he said, uh, Ray Lewis said he went over his house. He's like, dude, I'm, they're about to do a workout. He's like, dude, I'm starving. And Shan's like, I already got you, man. We, I get the meals down there. He's like, cool. He says, go down there. It's a plate, and it's a chicken breast, and three things of broccoli. And like I guess like a sweet potato. And, Ray, and Ed's like, or I'm Damn. sorry, uh, Ray's like, what the hell is this? He's like, that's how we eat, man. Right. He's like, you don't eat for pleasure anymore. You eat to fuel your body and be the best football player you can. Yeah. He's like, oh hell no! Wow. But Shannon just took you know that mentality into another. You're talking about the elite of the elite, and then he takes it to a whole another level. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Ray, I mean, Ray is is kicking us off, and you know we're following it up with Rob Riggle on Thursday. We're releasing every Monday and Thursday. Dude, can you give us? You were talking about Rob Riggle. I already love the guy. I already do. Any Saturday Night Live alum, I love. I forgot he was on there. Right. Because he was only on for one year. And I'm balls deep. So, I mean, I read the book, documentaries, yep. everything. He was, I just saw him in how to, how to Be a Latin Lover. He's always funny and everything. He's, does. he's funny and everything. And he's amazing. Can you give us a little insight? The, I'll give you, I love I'll give, this story. So the, I'll give you a little insight in this story. It's, it, it's such an, he's such an inspirational guy. And he's so genuine. He, in 
he learned to fly when he was 19 and his grandfather taught him to fly and he essentially got into flying in the military and he was three years into the military, into flying. And his buddy calls him from Chicago and said, dude, remember what a goofball you were in college and you were just kind of making stuff up on the fly. (laughs) He's like, people are, it's called improv. It has a name. He's like, you should totally do this. You people are making money at it. He's like, wow. And he went down to the beach and he thought to himself and he said, what am I going to do? I'm in flight school right now. I'm in three years. If I have to stay another five and that's eight years, that's your, the minimum. And then you have to spend another nine to get full retirement. And that's 17. He's like, wow, I, I I didn't realize that they had me for like 20 years. I hate flying anyway. He's like, I can't believe like, what am I going to do? And not giving away the entire story, he literally wrote down an affirmation that said, I'm going to be on Saturday Night Live. And 10 years, almost to the day, it came true. And the journey that he had to go through to wind up having that happen, he said, that moment on the beach where I wrote down my intention, had a vision, knew nobody in the industry, had never done anything in comedy, Mm -hmm. was just, um, he was just in the middle. He's like, I was a patriot. That's how it starts. Serving my country. How so, crazy! I it's mean, crazy. It's nuts. It's nuts. And it, it, these stories are—they're so in depth and they're amazing. There's something that everybody can relate to. I mean, both of you were on the podcast, and the you know the moments, those moments. A lot of times, what I'm finding out with these moments that change everyone's lives is sometimes they're aware, and sometimes it's evolutionary. It's like, wow, I made I I had this this experience, um, and at the time I thought it was awful. But it turns out it was the best thing that happened to me because if that didn't happen, then I never would have wound up where I was. Yeah. Um, it's does, does anyone on all the people you've had, does anyone talk about how they royally like screwed up and it yeah. led them to that here's point? A, here's a great story. So Fair Randy question. Couture. So we all know Randy. Mm-hmm. Randy is just an amazing guy. Captain America. Captain America. Now, what it, what's interesting is that without giving away the entire story is that he was on the trajectory and he had a goal of making the U.S. Olympic trials for wrestling. Like that was his, that was his goal. You know, grew up with single mom and was like wrestling is, that's going to be the thing that I'm gravitating toward and that's my goal. And he was well on his way to going that direction. And he got his girlfriend pregnant. And he had to make a decision. Do I continue down the wrestling road or do I give that up and get a job to provide for my family. Yeah, because wrestling makes zero dollars. Makes zero dollars, yeah, there's right? No money in it. So he ended up saying, you know what? I'm going to go get something steady and make money. And he ended up joining the military. And he said, all right, I'm, I'm out of the wrestling. I didn't know he was in the military. Yeah. Yeah. Who, and he'd say, hint, hint. Captain, Captain America. America. Well, that's not, that's not yeah. why you would call somebody Captain well, America. Part, well, part of the reason, well, no, long story short, uh, is... Over two years after he was, sta- he was stationed in Germany, he was. What was know, he a marine? Making- or? He was in the army. Army, oh, okay. yeah, he was in the army. He went over to Germany, and they had a wrestling tournament that he ended up entering and winning. Without it was wasn't like he like was focusing on this and training and winning. And by winning it, he got automatic entry into the U.S. <laughs> Olympic trials oh, for wrestling. God. How fun! He w- he he said, "I was like." This far away from it, and I went this direction all the way around the block. He's oh like, and at God. the time, I thought it was this. Oh my God! I just got my girlfriend pregnant. He's like, but without that, who who knows what would have happened? Tougher and it was, path for him. It, it was that. amazing. It, it, it's this the way that life and fate and the universe and the energy and how everything works, regardless of your religious belief. Somehow things come together when you're aware. Well, when you have intention. also momentum. Like I, I just like sometimes I think taking action regardless leads you into something. Like I, I mean, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, like, I, like, like, like I, I remember watching. I would always watch like in any group you're in, and you're I'm sure starting to see this in stand up, uh, but acting, stand up, or whatever, anything you do, I'm sure you saw it in fighting. When you're trying to get good at something, you will see that the majority of people. Right. create their own stagnant pond right. mm-hmm. what they'll do is they'll form their own community where they don't have to really hold each other accountable right they're all the same right same yeah aspirations yeah so so that's why i was just talking about you to stevie yesterday because he said you did such a good job you know he said 
you know, you held their attention for two hours, you know, and I was, I got super jealous and I insulted you. <laughs> but the thing is this, no, but, but I, I'm, I'm, it's, but I never had any doubt that you would do well because, you know, Brendan's doing stand up now, and, but he's not just doing stand up. He's created his own touring business. He, he's selling out on the road. He's going to Australia with the big brown breakdown. I think it's bullshit. I think it's right. disrespectful, and and I'm and I'm still outraged by it. Right, and I don't support it. But so here's stupid. the thing. But here's so the thing. Stupid. And also, he's changed. He he's has changed. changed. Fame he's has not affected as, him. He's not as respectful. He's not. And he doesn't ask he's me not. advice anymore. Right. But you know what? Fucking let him fly, bro. <laughs> if you want to, hey, bro, where's the those, story? You want to spread those little yeah, wheels? Yeah, I'm yeah, not. Bro. I'm happy. You're I'm going down a cool road. I know, but I'm happy for you. You don't seem Please, please fly away on your own. I leave just let you out of the nest. I'm trying to leave the Spread nest. Spread your wings if you think they're big enough to fly to fucking Australia. <laughs> Good luck over that oh, they, fucking ocean. They fly. They fly in they're flying first class. Flying. Hey, <laughs> now he's flying first class. This motherfucker. Oh, I'm fucking flying. This motherfucker's selling out on the road. But the, but the point is that I was saying to my wife and to John, I said, well, when Brendan told me that, because it took him a while to admit to himself what he really wanted. I was like, I, I, I had been saying from day one, I go, I have no doubt this motherfucker is going to succeed. And, you know, by the time he's 40, you're going to be seeing, you know, in my opinion, probably a really good headlining comic with specials under his belt, which I know is part of his dream. There's no doubt. And the reason is because he never stops fucking moving. And I know also that when he gets in that stagnant pond, which he did with fighting and now with stand up, when you see that, you know what fuels him? What fuels him is going, hey, these people aren't moving. Yeah, I'm just going to work harder now. And right. I think that's very important. And that's a through line with a lot of successful people is that you, you just keep taking action. Well, you right. I mean, just keep moving forward. Man. You know, there, what's interesting is, you know, one of the quotes from the podcast um, that we have is, you know, life presents a brick wall. And some people either just stop and look up and say, wow, that's a big wall. Yeah. And other people are like, you know what? I don't know how long this wall is, but I'm going to get around Start it. I'm going to go under it. Yep. I'm going to go over it. Yeah. I'm going to I'm going to abandon out, I'm gonna my friends it. and I'm just going to go do it. Right. And I'm, I'm going to tell Brian finger. Callen that he's not that funny. <laughs> that's much funnier than he <laughs> is. Apparently now he's exactly. saying, right. Like, I'm going to the store. I'm, I have a set tonight. What the yeah. fuck is really? this <laughs> on a Tuesday? <laughs> hey, dude, want to hang out? No, I'm going to do some I get stand up. Bro. What are you doing? Last night I get a text. You, What are you up to tonight? I'm like, oh, I'm having dinner with my wife. You want to join? No, <laughs> period. No, period. Gotta set at the store. <sighs> yeah, well, I want you to come. come. The yeah. fuck? I want you to come. Hey, do you, do, anyways, do you yeah. feel like uh, a lot of people in these stories, do they chalk it up to religion? I would um, find that interesting. And I, I wish, I don't know where you stand on this. We don't have to get into it, but I always find it so interesting. And almost, I'm jealous of the guys who chalk up the certain moments to religion. Right. Well, the, so I was born and raised Catholic and I, but I didn't go to Catholic school. And what was hammered into me from a very young age is there is no one right religion. Like your a religion for you is a way to relate to the universe. Yeah. And however that is, whether mm -hmm. or not you're agnostic that. or mm -hmm. an atheist or Satan. whether or not you're a <laughs> Buddhist, mm -hmm. you're, you're viewing the world in a particular way but we all have this common goal of genuinely perpetuating love. And that, that is genuinely our purpose, whether or not it's through having children or being kind, whatever it is, giving back to others, we're perpetuating love. Now, the commonality in all of these stories is everybody does relate to the universe one way or the other, regardless of their religious belief. They have a view and that view does affect, okay, am I moving forward or not? What I'm finding is that the people that are high achievers are also big believers. They're believers in, I'm not going to fall off the cliff. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take the step and there's going to be something underneath. Because there's a higher that. being? Just because of the way they look at the universe. Yeah. Some people, like Diana Nyad, great example. She's an atheist. She's the only person to swim from Cuba to Florida. And you want to know what age she had her big brink of midnight moment where everything changed in her life what? when she was 60. 60? 60. Ain't she had a bitch. failed four times swimming from Cuba to Florida. Yeah, and, what happened to her? Didn't she get stung by fucking crazy jellyfish? Uh, she, just everything. You know, Sharks. hypothermia and, and jellyfish and weather and dehydration. She's the only person that ever swim that whole thing? Yeah. The only, the only without, human. Without a net or with a net? Without No, with no shark cage. No shark cage, no did nothing. She, not she was once, 63 did when she did it. Did she not do it once and people were like, oh, bullshit, you got a net? 
No. Did that happen? No. And then she took it away? No. She never made I it. I made that up. You did make that no, up. No, no, she no. She never made it. I think I, I, there was somebody who did that. Who with, did a it with a net. Shark, and they had a draft thing. They yeah, were like, people were like, draft. that's bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. Take she away failed. the net. Yeah, so and, li- and the boat was creating a draft yeah. for them, so they didn't have So to listen to this. She failed four times. And the last time she did it, she was in her 30s. She took 30 years off of swimming. That's a long That's a long that's break. That's a break. That's a break. That's a well, it's a break. You're not sore anymore. Right. So she and she, when she was 60, was reading a poem when that the essence of the poem was saying, what did you do with your beautiful life? What did you do with the opportunity you've been given? This one opportunity that you've been given. She was 60 in her car and she said, ah, I've never made it to Florida from Cuba swimming. I've got to do it. After taking Jesus. 30 years off, she's like, that was the moment. That changed my, she's like, and now she has the luxury, she's like, I have the luxury of time of looking back at my entire life. When you hear the other moments that you would think, oh, yeah, being sexually abused at a really young age. Yeah, that would be a, a moment that would change your life. She's like, yeah, that's the, it's, it changed my life for sure. It's a big moment, but that's not the big, big one. Yeah. That didn't happen until I was six. Did she maybe poem. miss a bunch of signs? You no, think? no. Well, she had tried. No. <laughs> well, what, what no, if she was years of signs? Yeah. And then... Some people just don't have inspiration until it comes out of nowhere. Right? Yeah. Well, she or was already right inspiration. inspiration. She yeah. was already a rock star in the endurance circuit and, and so really, speaking so engagement. Oh, she was making she Right, she was already she was already a star in that scene. Oh, okay. In that she oh, was gotcha. going to do speaking engagements and motivational things of hey, don't give up and don't try. And she decides she ends up completing the swim from Cuba to Florida when she's sixty three. I mean, like, what do you? What, That's crazy. What, when you're sixty, how long did it take her? Uh, I forget the exact time. It was a hundred. It's like hundred and ten miles. To swim um, and nonstop. To swim and nonstop. How about hey? By the way, yeah. How about walk one hundred and ten miles? See how long that takes. now. Do you want to know what's amazing about this? Do you know what her new cause is? Her new cause. She's like, distance swimming is inaccessible. I mean, not everybody can just go out and, you know, try to swim 10 miles or five miles, right? It's just too time consuming to do whatever. Her new cause is to get people to walk. She's like, how about we just get everybody walking every day? I say it's the best form of exercise. And and that's her new mission. So she literally has created created her own movement and they're having walks and they're going to do giant walks. All mm. over the country. It's really inspirational. Mm. And they just walk. Just walk? walk. That's cool. You see, uh, I think, <laughs> I, what's <laughs> interesting, I think uh, yeah, Kevin Hart uses this platform. You know, he does, you know, most He's successful tour yeah. ever. And he's, you know, came out with Nike. He teamed up with Nike. He has his own shoe. Any city he goes into, they do a huge marathon. Yeah. Wow. And it's like run with Kevin Hart. And, the, you know, it's like thousands of people run with Kevin Hart Damn. in the yeah. city. It's and nuts. it's like get out yeah. and move. I mean, the, really the key to health is just do something every day. Yeah. Just whether it's that, walking. That's why they say all the blue zones, they all garden, they all work outside with their hands, low paced. They're low being paced act, you're saying like active lifestyle. Yeah. Like they, they they all do something. Typically, most of them have a garden, which is weird. Yeah. They'll, they'll, but but the point is that they're digging, they're moving. on their feet, they're moving. You're they're moving, moving. You're they're doing moving. something. Think about the way that's, that our society has sort of molded the workplace, right? I mean, it's like a cubicle and a chair and sitting and typing and crouched and screen right here like it's it's not good for us as a physical form well uh, type 2 diabetes is up i was going to talk about this i'm dropping knowledge but it doesn't matter but type 2 diabetes is up 700 percent jesus christ since 1960 not alcohol related fatty liver disease which is was only what alcoholics had right is now prevalent in children of an epidemic proportions I mean, Americans and, and people in Western countries have it in the tens of millions where people are having metabolic diseases like this all because what's fascinating is Sam Harris did an amazing podcast on this with Gary Taubes. We cannot agree on how to eat, but for, we know one thing. There's a lot of money in sugar and a lot of money in, in sort of simple carbohydrates. Fast food, and too. I, and I mean, I, it's just, but that's what's easy, and, but that's also what's affordable. Well, it actually, like, though, whose fault is also, that? actually, though, in fact, if you look at Michael Pollan stuff, that's not what's affordable. So, so when you if you were to eat simple foods, right, carrots, uh, a, a sweet potato, an apple. broccoli, and apple, that's not a meal, fellas. You can't make money off that. Okay? That's not a meal, though. What do you mean it's not a meal? Like apples, you, carrots. No, 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 I'm saying. So let me let me break it down. So a piece of chicken, or you know, two eggs, um, an apple, and uh, a sweet potato. Let's just uh, for lack just for argument's sake. 
there's not a lot of money in that when you when you sell foods that way. So the food industry makes a lot of money by combining a lot of stuff. So they'll take sure. yogurt, low fat yogurt with lots of sugar, and it's got Fruit, seventeen different ingredients. It, yeah. Right. So then when you do that, th- what happens is the way you sell things with low fat is you got to put a lot of sugar because they won't taste good. Yep. And so so much. It's of cheaper the, way to do that. Mass produce it. Do yeah, you want to know what's correct. interesting? Is you know Herschel Walker. <laughs> oh yeah. You know he ate one meal a day and still eats one meal a day. Yeah, he's a genetic freak. Just the problem <laughs> with these guys is they're such genetic freaks. <laughs> but, but when like, you say that, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I get so mad at all this. No, I like, get that. He's yeah, such I a freak. That. He does he, football, exercise is such a religion. He does a million push-ups a day. But I hear what Which you're saying. Yeah. What I'm saying Compete is that a, M- what, MMA at what was he 44 beating the shit out of you guys? He's 49. I think. I don't know. Yeah, he he was one of the biggest, freak, one of the biggest freaks of all bring time. Bring him up at at his age now. Take a look at his body because it's ridiculous. It what is amazing about him is that look, he never lifted a weight, did push ups and sit ups genuinely, which is the theory of yoga, right? Like you have all the weight you need yeah. and everything to yeah. get all the strength that you need. Yeah. and he doesn't eat that much. And he yeah. and he said, and, and when I met him, I, I'm like this. So why do you only eat one one time a day? He just said. I just don't need that much food. Yeah. And your body, what's amazing about your body is how it adapts to whatever it is that you're whatever putting resource. into it. Yeah. The question is, is when you start putting stuff into it that it can't overcome. That, that'd be him at, uh, uh, that, that's, that's Herschel Walker. Now, again, <laughs> we have to be careful. When you take these extreme athletes, these, these complete freaks, you probably, Brian Callen probably wouldn't follow that protocol necessarily. There are probably things to learn from a guy like that, but he's already such a genetic, you know this. But I, I agree. You, but you could, there's takeaways you can do yeah. from it. Like, you know, I used to, when growing up, my family just didn't know any better. It's like breakfast, the most important meal, you know, sugars, Oatmeal, brown sugar, then mm-hmm. you gotta have a snack, yep. then you need lunch, and then yep. you gotta have a big dinner. You need your potatoes, you need your fat, you know, cheese and all that stuff. We, candy was all right, soda's all right. Mm. And then, you know, as you get older, you get more educated. You know, now I'm I'm around two meals a day. Like I don't, I fast all morning, I, I don't eat to one. If you would have done that to me in high school, I would have been like, You're crazy. Right. right. And my body, you know, it takes a while for it to adapt. If you but we're conditioned three three meals a day, breakfast the biggest one. The food pyramid, which is complete mm-hmm. bullshit. Mm-hmm. But there's if it's just more of educating people. Now I'm not saying eat once a day and you're gonna end up like Herschel Walker. <laughs> That's him. No. <laughs> right. You, how he got more shredded from fifty <laughs> from twenty one <laughs> to fifty. So think about this though. God, That's so think about this. In terms of what you're conditioning your body for. And and I did this. I've done this recently. I just gave up processed food. So and and by processed I mean like like clearly processed pastas Sugar and, and yeah. yeah stuff Things that's that just like down. yeah like stuff that's just you look at it and you're like i don't know if it's going to come out of me really easily mm. like, i think the like, issue when you say processed people go well what is that exactly he's talking like fast food cheeseburgers yeah, like bread and muffins and stuff that you look at and I, in, in my brain i go i don't know if it's going to get out of me i'm not i'm not sure how long it's going to take me to process this like that that that's my standard What's amazing is when you look at the, the the meals that you're actually being served and the size of the portions and the things that are in it, if you just say to yourself, I'm going to eat half of that. Like, I'm just going to eat half. The, so tough to do, John. Half, I know. But if yeah. you were only given that, if you go to Europe and go to Italy, right, they're not giving you giant portions. That's they're why I ordered triple. Nice, nice <laughs> measured portions. Yeah. If you say to yourself, I'm only going to eat half that meal. I, I when I go to a restaurant, I literally don't order because I'm like I'm gonna eat leftovers because nobody's gonna finish all their meal. Yeah. So I'm gonna eat my whatever my kids don't eat. I'm I'll eat that is gonna be fine. It's amazing how little you actually need to eat to stay healthy and stay and functional depends, yeah. as long as you're eating the right stuff. Yeah. Depends you don't want to live on how much you train. Candy. You don't eat actually a lot, which is amazing for mm. a guy your size. No, but, and you're giant. You're yeah. much bigger than I am, but you don't consume. Well, he eats I can the right though. Way. It's a struggle yeah. every day. Right. But you, you seem to have a pretty good handle on, because you had to kind of learn about it, right? Yeah, I, I just, I, I'd be curious with all these people you've interviewed, do, do, how many of them talking about diets and stuff? Because let's be real here, you're interviewing the 1% of 1%. Like Ray Lewis, I don't, all right, all right, what's your routine, Ray? It's going to be fucking tough for most people to relate to it. Yeah. But six-year-old swimmer, okay, I get it. You're six, so you can swim your balls off. 
you know? Which, which so it's tough. So I think regular people are like, all right, well. So I'm not getting into any of the like diet or any of sort of like the routine because I'm looking for the moments that change. That could be life. a moment, though. It could be a moment, but it's it that it might hasn't be maintenance been. or how they learn. And exactly. It, the, like the, if you had a moment, th- of this like, might be too soon. But if you had Big Black on from Robin Big, and right. if he was like, the moment for me is when I changed my diet. Oh, doesn't have a heart attack. Yeah. I just died. Shout out Big Black. Love that guy. Right. You know what I'm saying? That that could have been a huge moment for him. It could have been. Our it, boy Chin used to be 300 pounds. His moment could have been <laughs> dropped in the goddamn Korean barbecue. That would have been a huge moment. Right. When you when you look at what are those moments in life where everything changed, diet certainly could be one of them. Probably rare though. Probably rare, right? That's probably not because there was something that led up to it. There's something that they got you to change your diet in the first first place. There's something that kind of as an exam as an example in my own life, you know, I was the meathead in the gym when I was twenty seven years old. So I was you know, I was bench pressing and decline and fly, just crazy weight. And I looked like, you, you know, mean, I looked like a pyramid. Yeah, I, you mean being awesome, John? Yeah. I was, I was like, the, I was a total like. Blonde and awesome. I, yeah. I had like little skinny legs, but I could lift a ton of weight in when I was 27. But I then said to myself, you know what? I wonder if I can run a mile. I'm just curious. And I tried to run a mile. I couldn't. I weighed 198 pounds. Damn, I'm five foot eight. Yeah. I was like almost at 200 pounds. I'm like, oh my God, I'm almost 200 pounds. I'm really strong. Why? For people who don't know John, John's an extremist. <laughs> like he's an extremist. I gave, him, dude, I, I gave him a shake. Oh, I gave him a shake. To you, this this um, uh, guy was on the uh, national well, speed skating team, and he's a nutritionist, and he's really smart. And this shake was really awesome. It was like almond butter. You put like you know maybe half a banana. You put some right. green powder. You put some protein powder. It was a good shake. And I so I I prescribe it to John because I said, dude, this thing works for me, man. It. Yeah, I get try this out. And he goes, he calls me. He goes, I'm getting gas. I have a lot of gas. I go, well. Why? He goes, what are you putting in it? He goes, no, just what you told me. I go, well, how much are you drinking knowing him? And he goes, well, I put three bananas. I take <laughs> too a half a jar. <laughs> just literally, I mean, literally an entire, entire gallon. You're drinking a gallon. I was like, hey, cut shake. it down. How about a one fucking glass, you an extreme? <laughs> so I do things. <laughs> Lizzie, my wife, refers to me as just one speed. I'm either on oh, or off. Unbelievable. It, as That's an example good. with health, when I was almost 200 pounds, it was 198. I never got to 200. And I said, I literally said, no more lifting ever. I'm, I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break the five minute mile. And I was 27. Yeah. I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna break the five minute mile because I can't complete a mile. And in high school, when I ran the mile, I never broke five minutes. It was so lame. And I'm like, God, I'm gonna do it. I tracked down my old high school track coach. And said, We're, I'm going to train to break the five-minute mile just because I lost 47 pounds so and ran a 455. Jesus. Yeah. Oh, that's like, John. That's, that's you. <laughs> I was that's like, you. Just and for I the hell of it. I was with him when he was training for a triathlon, and we were shooting in <laughs> England. And it was, we were shooting this show for Discovery Sports, and it was so... Like we would wake up early and they, we'd have to write the script. They would really right. write it, and I would edit it, and we would do it, and we'd have to shoot, and we have to interview people. And it was a long, long day. John had a cold. John's like, like that. And John, I've never seen anybody, and to this day, the only person that competes is Jerry McFadden. I have never seen anybody who needs less sleep. I've never really? seen any. I'm dude, jealous of that, dude. I'm talking about. I saw Three it hours. over and over with my own my. Well, I'm talking about. Uh, he would go to bed at 12, be up at four and, and he had a cold and I go, what are you doing? You, you don't, don't run today. He goes, I will run today. I will, yeah, I will run 12 sense. miles today. And he would run and he would, so we'd be shooting and then he would wake up way too early, run 12 miles and or whatever still kill it. and then still kill it. So, the, so, you know, to that point, I've done five Ironman triathlons. I did the Leadville 100 mountain bike I race. It, I swam from Hermosa Beach Pier to Santa Monica uh, Pier, it. which Great is 13 whites. miles. Great it was whites like, everywhere. You know, it's like, exactly. Yeah. It was like, I do a lot of extreme stuff. Now get this. So when my wife, when Lizzie and I meet, I'm doing a, in the Ironman in Kona um, for the show. And I'm, I'm, so I'm doing the Ironman in Kona. And it's the Super Bowl of triathlons. And oh my God, I'm doing it. I'm surviving. And Lizzie decides, you know what? I think I want to give that a go. I, I think I want to do it. And in the back of my mind, I'm like, I don't think you understand what you're getting yourself into. So Lizzie, as a mom of two, decides to start to train. And I start giving her the workouts for running. She was never a runner. She didn't know how to swim. She was never a a, a cyclist. So she decides, you know what? I'm going to become, I'm going to run and I'm going to give me some workouts. So she knew nothing about it. So I give her all the workouts of how to break a five minute mile that was, that my high school coach had given me when I did it. She keeps coming home from the gym. She's like, okay, I did that. What next? I'm like, what? 
What are you talking about? She's a high cut to cut to so that Calabas is 10K, uh, which she ran. She runs it. The first time she runs it, she sets the course record. Jesus Christ. She's just like, what? Like, you what, made, what, you, what you do married you made an X-Men. Yeah. yeah. She, then AKA she, Jean Grey. She runs a 125 yeah, half marathon as one of her first just like endurance. She's like, oh, yeah, I'll run a half marathon. She was a 125. We enter the same Ironman triathlon. She can't. She she really is not an amazing swimmer. She's a she's an average swimmer. Swimming's probably the toughest part Every of time. Yeah. Well, it's the hardest part for her. Yeah. She is so much faster than everyone else in the run. It, each event that we've done, she just runs by and hits me right in the butt. And she's what? like, later, she'll finish an hour ahead of me. She blows me By the way, she's, five feet, she's five feet tall. By the way, she's five feet tall. She's not 5'1". She's five feet tall. She's five really? feet tall. She's five feet she'll tall. She'll say if one half inch. my girl passed me up, I get home, take a warm hand her. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Don't ever <laughs> disrespect me. Don't ever. 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 My Publicly. son saw that shit. <laughs> <laughs> I got a reputation ever. out here. Ever. Well, are, do you, are you thinking about running a marathon? Yeah, I want to. Yeah, yeah I run well, all the time. I average around 14, 16 miles a week. Yeah, for 200, I'm 240 pounds, 230 pounds. That's a lot. It's yeah. a, it's, it's pretty amazing. And I, mean, then I, I run the Santa Monica stairs. I, I usually do, I'll do like four miles a day, and then I'll run the Santa Monica stairs back to back. Lizzie can train you because she's trained a bunch of people um, in marathon. She has her own, you know, yeah. she, uh, coaching business that she's like, look, Jeez. she's such a good athlete and has gone through so much. She's like, here's here's the plan. She'll uh, yeah. My she goal can, would be to do time. the Iron Man. You yeah, want to do the Ironman? Yeah, that's what I want to do. I mean, they, both she and I. I can t- here. Here's your workout regimen for it. It's an interesting. It's an interesting experience for yeah, sure. Yeah, something to do. You know, yeah. something. To, something like, to do. I feel it's, like the swimming wouldn't be a problem. I running. love swimming. Yeah, you, you just got to do it. For yeah. me, it'd be finding time to it's, commit to it with stand up. Yeah, it's there's a difference. So doing. So I've done five of them. I really enjoyed like one of them because the other there is there's a big difference between finishing. And enjoying finishing. Yeah. There's a huge... Cause Why? Because the, it's so grueling? It's just such a... If you're not really in awesome shape, which yeah. for... It's it really like for two or three of the five that I did, it wasn't in great shape. But it's a long day. And you're like, yeah. oh my God, I'm pushing through this. Oh, I bet. And when you cross the finish line, you're like, I've already done it three times. Like, why did I do this? How do you yeah. feel Start How questioning. do you feel the next day or the week? I mean, after? you obviously, you're really, you're really depleted, but it really depends on each athlete like for me when i'm not in that great a shape and you're finishing it you're pretty wiped out for people who do this all the time they'll you know you can just keep going and going and going and it's not like this monumental thing that affects you for people who are really good i heard cam haynes you know what cam haynes is he's a ultra marathon runner best hunter in the world just a man's man and he was talking about um there's a race that he wants to do that only like 14 people have ever completed there's no map. There's yeah. nothing. Yeah. And uh, you run like through the woods at yeah. night. And I forget how many miles. It's cra- crazy. You yeah. Go through all it's this a crazy terrain. race. It's like 150 something miles. But he said he ran like 50, got to a point and he wanted to take a nap. He took a nap, and he th- but he thought he was so far ahead of everyone. And so he fell asleep, I don't know, for like 40 minutes, woke back up and started running. Because you had 24 hours, you got to go. And he said he got to the finish line. He figured he found out he was uh, fourth. He's like, what the fuck? He found out those other guys aren't sleeping. They they're ain't running through the, they, yeah, they're running through the hours. night. They run through the yeah. night. They run through the night. What? Yeah, you can run through the well, night. No, it's ma- just, nothing. You, have, you just got to figure it out. It's pretty you nutty. Just run through the night. Like, if you talk to Cam Haynes about, you know, yeah. like Iron Man, he's like, what? I know. You know the he, Iron- he runs that devil one with, through the, you know, they start at the lowest point in California, go all the way through the peaks where it's yep. 200 degrees. Yeah, oh, you get, you get yeah. into what's interesting about the Iron Man is when I did my first one, it was in nineteen, I think it was nineteen ninety seven, and it wasn't nearly this big a like enterprise as it is now. Oh, it's killing it. I now. mean, now Just how, what is it exactly? How many miles? So it's two, a two point four mile swim, one hundred and twelve mile bike, and a twenty six point two mile run. Here's a great stat on my first Iron Man. So yeah. when I decided to do an Iron Man, I, I break the five minute mile. My friend, my 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 best friend. Ran the Marine Corps Marathon. And like all best friends do, when he called me up, he said, all right, I did it. I said, that's great. How many other people were in the race and finished? And didn't Oprah run a marathon? Like, and <laughs> Oprah didn't do the Iron Man, though, right? Oprah, no, that's what I said. I said, Oprah never did an Iron Man. I'm going to do an Iron Man. What's an Iron Man? So I look it up, and I'm like, oh, man, it's a 2.4-mile swim. I don't know how to swim, but... I guess I'll figure it out. It's a 112 mile bike. I don't own a bike, but I guess I'll have to go buy one. Oh, and a 26.2 mile run. 
I've never run more than a 5K, so but all right, I guess I'll give that a try. So I just decide to do it. Just I, literally to it. just to one up my friend. Yeah. I'm like, I'm gonna just one up you. So I go to the pool and I literally get the little kitty, you know, uh swim instructor, and I'm like, Can you teach me how to swim? <laughs> because Did you not know? I didn't I only knew how to not drown. I didn't right. know how to stroke and, and breathe or yeah. anything. So cut to so I train by myself with, you know, you know, the dead of winter in Virginia, right outside of D.C. It's a horrible winter. It's freezing. And I go to New Zealand on my own I, to do an Ironman. And I'm in, in New Zealand. And there's a fun swim that happens two days before the race. And it was a two-mile open water swim. And my buddy called me and said, you should, do, you should try swimming in the open water because there's not a wall or any lane. Yeah, I heard line. it's a beast. Like, it's harder than you think. So I said, okay. So I swim, I get in the water, and there are only about 100 people doing this fun swim. It's not even part of the event. It's just like a, hey, we'll go and swim. I thought I was literally going to drown. Is that I'm swimming. I'm only, you know, a quarter mile into this. And I'm like, oh, my God, this is the worst obituary ever. Yeah, you man just go on drowns, drowns, a fun one swim. up him. <laughs> also <laughs> trained for weeks before yeah. with a kitty instructor. Right. Dies in yeah, New Zealand. Dies in water. I'm like, what and you die like this, Rocks. You dies know, in you New know, Zealand. You, you know you drown like that? Die. 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 It's actually even quieter. <laughs> just like goes, boom. Yeah. Just boom. Uh, yeah, here. No, everyone else I, is moving. Everyone is gone. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and that's that. And I and literally. And you, the ocean just goes, thanks. But it's not like, oh my God, get him. The people get to the end, they're like, you want to see John? And then that's exactly John's right. John's not found. No, that's right. But nobody, that's nobody right. would even ask that because you didn't have to sign up for the event. It's a, it's the equivalent oh, of a fuck. fun run. And the headline is John missing. John, <laughs> no, no. J- we found the body. John dies in water after thinking he was qualified to swim this crazy fucking race right. with a with a kid instructor back it just in says Washington. This. All it so, says is this: John gone. <laughs> So listen, so I do that swim. I swim the two miles in one hour. It was a half hour a, mi- and a half hour per mile, which isn't horrible, but I was the whole I was just thinking to myself, this this is awful. I'm gonna die and this is terrible. So I go seek out there's an instructor that's there that's having a clinic who is a former Olympian. And I just go up to the guy, I'm like, listen, the race is in two days. I don't know how to swim, evidently. Like I need a clinic. This guy just literally spends a, a half hour with me. He teaches me catch-up swimming, which is just you know making sure that you're not dropping your hand too early. So he teaches me to catch-up swim. Day of the race comes. It's 2.4 miles, so it's almost a half mile further. I just, I'm just i scared out of my mind. There are 1,100 people in the race. I Gun goes off. I finish 2.4 miles in 59 minutes. So almost a half mile further, and I'm in the top 10% of the whole race. Jesus. And I had never gone that distance. That's performance and drama. I had I never. I it, like, was, mm. it was this just, I literally just focused on exactly what this Olympian told me. Well, I said, that's all I, I said, I just don't drop your hand, don't drop your hand, and keep going and keep going. Details. And it was a tiny little detail of like, you're working too hard, you're working against, you have to have a conversation with the water, you got to feel the energy, way you're swimming, yeah. conserve your energy. It was. And so I'm like, oh my god, I can't believe it. And as it turns out, I'm actually a decent swimmer. That's I'm like, cool. well, I also I like that Roger Bannister story about how all these physiologists said it's impossible to break a four, four minute mile. They're like, it's not physically how possible for that? a human being. This was 1961 yeah, yeah. or something. They didn't see Hussein Bolt. No, no, the but black no, for, guys coming around. no, for the for the mile, for the, for the mile, for no, a mile, no. right? So yeah, but they didn't just didn't see like the type of athletes that were going to be around today. <clears throat> well, they couldn't envision that. R- well, well, miles a little bit different, but but so so what the point I'm making is that the guy runs it. He shatters. Everybody's like, oh my god, it's humanly possible. That same year. Five other guys did it. Uh, right? Forty-seven days later, because they 40, set the ceiling. Forty-seven yeah. days. Yeah. Forty-seven. Because when so, you can conceive of something, yeah. Bannister broke it. Then forty-seven days later, someone else breaks it. In the now literally high in the next, are doing it. Literally, the next ten years, three hundred people break it. Yeah, and it's it's once every twelve days. It was like just something crazy. As soon as people go, oh, oh. shit, someone can do that. Yep. I can definitely yep. do that. And That's that what happens. And that goes to there is an amazing theory of. Look, maybe once something happens, it's in our collective conscience, right? Like we are... What's possible? Yeah, like, you know what? We all know as a species, hey, this is something that we can do, and it's not well, it's not the, the crazy. But I wrote yeah. a book called The Perfection Point that was a New York Times bestseller about book. what is the theoretical limit of human performance if 
everything were perfect. If you had the perfect human specimen in the perfect conditions with the perfect gear, how fast could you run the hundred? How you fast could you run the mile? So you got to read the book. But for I'll give you an example of yeah, the hundred meter dash. Hundred meter, hundred meter, hundred meter dash is, I believe, the ultimate record is eight point nine nine. Jesus that's the Christ, fastest that's that you possibly really... could run. Now you'll look up and you describe the body type. It's a really interesting book. Here's the way. body type. Here's the perfect condition. Is, is a Hussein Bolt close to that body type? It is close to that body type. Yeah. They, you would say, okay, this is sort long. of short body, yeah, but it's long sm- legs, long legs. You have to have, you know, obviously your stride, uh, stride rate uh, versus stride length ratio needs to be exactly perfect. You have to be at the right elevation. You have to have the right shoes. You got to have the right tailwind because if the it, the tailwind has a limit, Jesus. you have to have the right reaction time because that doesn't count if if the reaction time is off. Yikes. If everything were perfect and were lined yes. up, and when people look at a graph and actually say, well, Usain Bolt is such an outlier. If you actually look at the graph, and I have it in, in, in the book, in the perfection point, Usain Bolt just put us back on course because there was this dark age in between Ben Johnson and when Usain Bolt broke the record because there was this dark period where the world record was not being broken every other month. Mm-hmm. Like it was, it took mm. a while for us to break it and we caught back up to where we were supposed to be. So Until actually, the steroids got really undetectable. Well, right. yeah. well, well, that's that, gonna, the drugs ended up changing. Is what that's what I was going to say to, to in your book when you say it's right. 8.999 or whatever right. the 100 is. Do you take into account with performance enhancing drugs? Yes. I assume that I assume that all athletes are on drugs. You had a really good in the book. You had a really good point on the in the book about this. You talk a lot about it. You assume all I assume I assume everybody is on whatever (laughs) can maximize the human frame. Because there's a there is a limit to how strong and big and fast you can actually get because the frame can only support so much. So in the theory of the book, I'm saying whether it's through a PED or a natural, you arrive at the ultimate the body could be. Mm. So it Even doesn't with matter. Performance right. In the, yeah. It's a theoretical there's a physical, argument. There's a physics to the There's a to the physics body. limit, right? Mm-hmm. Because you can only get to be so strong before the frame, you, before, if you have 2,000 pounds over your head and you're trying to bench, no matter how big and strong you think you are, it's going to crush you. What's the, your frame can't support What's it. the highest vertical leap that we've recorded? Did you ever record like... Yeah, the, you know, when you look at the vertical leap of the highest in history, it's really, it's really kind of controversial because the numbers are so inexact. I mean, they're, they're not accurate. If you look up right now, Michael Jordan, 50-inch vertical leap, you'll find people that say, oh, Michael Jordan had a 50-inch vertical leap. Michael Jordan's the greatest basketball player to ever play, but he did not have a 50-inch vertical There's leap. There's no way he had a 50-inch Right, there's no way. We, really? had, no. we had a young, healthy Dwight Howard in the lab that set the record for the highest touch of 12 – 12 feet, 6 inches, highest touch of anybody he's in the seven NBA. 7 foot tall though, right? He's like, yeah, he's like 6'11", 7 feet. But, but he's the perfect combination. When you hear people say, oh, my buddy can grab a quarter off the back of a backboard, you're like, not an NBA backboard. That's 13 feet. Well, yeah. uh, like, Dominic Wilkins no. apparently could. Do you have footage of it? Nope. That's my answer. No, you yeah, don't. Yeah, yeah, that's all. Yeah, that's, that's all conjecture. That's all, and that's that all playground. That's all playground. Yeah. They put a quarter on a playground backboard and they grabbed it off the top of that, but not an NBA backboard. No, okay. like if if Michael Jordan couldn't do it, LeBron can't do it. Dwight Howard couldn't do it. They, nobody could. They, they, they can't do it. But do it. when you right, say highest, when player. you say highest vertical, and then you see Dwight Howard who recorded in your studio, but he's seven foot tall. I'm sure if you had Spud Webb in there, yeah, we know that like he well, can't right, jump obviously. as high. Nobody's exactly. also fucking tiny. Exactly. It, it depends you on your power to weight. Harder, it's you your know? power to weight ratio, your fast twitch muscle fibers. Depends how explosive you are. It's like all those factors lined up. So it's a. I mean, it, I've been very fortunate to have a front row seat to analyze the world's greatest athletes. Um, the the big commonality, quite honestly, in sort of all this performance talk is they're black. They're no <laughs> Brendan. No. Big asses. I'm, I'm sorry. No, I thought that's where you're going. No. I, well, you know, they, man, I thought we we're talking about this athletes. Is a family show. Are you going to let me make my point? Yeah. Sorry. 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 Man. sorry. Lord. God. Sorry. Yeah. I'm, it's they work hard. They have vision, and they all have a moment in their life mm-hmm. where they went one way or the other. Yeah, it's but there's also a physical issue. There is a. But listen, that physical issue. When people say, "Oh, they're all genetic freaks," I can't stand that argument of people saying, "Well, they're just your Herschel Walker argument." Well, he's just a genetic freak. At the elite level, they're all genetic. Correct. Right. They're all so you're on a level playing field. When people, well, they go, yeah, but that one guy is blank. Well, that one guy worked harder, stayed longer, was smarter, played the game Correct. better. They're not when yeah. you Cause, say because there's a there's a and you know I'm not discrediting Hersh Walker, but there's a ton of guys 
who are out there just built like Herschel Walker who never did shit. Mm-hmm. It's true. There are there's a ton of those sure. freaks out there. It's true. Who, are, who decided not to risk anything. Oh, sure. They're comfortable I, I being that. in their spot. Also, and sports being good at the sport is elusive. It's very interesting because so you can have guys who are amazing athletes. I'm sure Larry Bird didn't have a high vertical and a fast forty, and and there were a lot of things. I'm sure he's very athletic, way more athletic than people realize. But at the same time, what made him great was these sort of other mitigating circumstances, these other X Larry Bird was also a freak, though. You know what? <clears throat> in sports, people do this all the time. Because Larry was white, right. he, Larry was very smart, calculated, but if he was black, super freak athlete, no, no, no. Larry Bird is a freak. Physically. They are. I mean, freak. When, you, when, yeah. you look at, when you look at athletes and you sort of say, you know, look at the greats, you know, the greatest of the great. So look at Gretzky. Mm-hmm. You know, like, was he the biggest, strongest, fastest no. player on look the Look at ice? Messi. T- look at Messi, right? They, you got this guy that's just little tiny dude Messi's running around. Messi's tiny. Right, yeah. and, I can't, and that's why it's very, when people say, who are, the, who are the athletes that you've worked with that impressed you the most? I'm like, guys who are my side, like Isaiah Thomas for the Celtics. Oh, my He's God. my size, and he's tearing he's it up. He's your size? What do you mean? He's freak. my size. He's no, literally 5'9". He's 5'9". He's no. He's the point. Isaiah, what? How do you know Brian's thinking of the Detroit Pistons. No, I'm thinking yeah, about Isaiah Brian doesn't watch the NBA. He just scored 50. Three he's points th- he's the thinking Isaiah Thomas games. from the Detroit Pistons. Right. Isaiah Thomas is the starting point guard, guard for the, the Celtics. Oh, the Celtics. That, who am I thinking about? The, the You're thinking of Isaiah Detroit. Thomas. It's a point this guard from so, the Pistons. Oh, guy. Yeah, yeah. So there's Isaiah Thomas. <laughs> okay. And who's old, Coach retired. For a while, yeah. got, got and lost then there's job. Isaiah Thomas, Thomas, who's the parents named him after Isaiah oh, Thomas. I got you. Who's the star in, I uh, probably finished third or fourth in MVP voting. For the Boston Celtics, his sister oh, just died. Oh, that one. Yeah. Yeah. He, and he scored 53 Sorry. points the other night in he's a playoff game. Oh, my game. God. He's tiny. He's tiny. He's my oh, size. Oh, my God. He's my size. He's playing against trees. <clears throat> yeah. Right? He's a, little, he's a little shrug. A little bit like Allen Iverson. Forest. Yeah. It's, Ironous. Yeah. Yeah. And, that, and those, those are the people that, are, that really impressed him the most. But even with all that, the idea of what makes someone great, I'm telling you that there's a moment that happened, whether or not it was in Ray Lewis's life or Marshawn Lynch's life, where they had to go one way or the other. That's that's the commonality. In your podcast, you could have gone one way or the other. You think about the fact that you are not somebody who's... You could have... Could you have kept playing football? Mm-hmm. Could you have kept fighting? Mm-hmm. But you decide, You made a... Like the moment happened where you go one way or the other and your life is never the sure. same. Yeah. Those moments, that yeah. idea of growth, that idea of achieving greatness is what the Brink of Midnight podcast is about. And that's what the common thread is behind all high achievers. And I think everybody has those moments. It depends on how profound they are in their life and how you're actually viewing them. One theory that I have- Or they didn't take action. And I want to see if you agree or disagree with this. I think these Brink of Midnight moments that happen, happen in cycles. They can only happen at certain points in your life. And I use like- if you visualize a graph in just a straight 45 degree line going up, that's your life of wh- where you should be and what you should be doing. This is where you, this is the way you're supposed to go, but we don't live life in a straight line. We live it in a zigzag. So mm-hmm. we're crossing that line. And every time we cross that line, a moment could happen. Things line up like you're ready for change. Mm-hmm. And then if you don't, if it doesn't happen, you go keep going off and then you come back and you cross it again. Does that moment happen again? For, so for, for uh, in my case, could like the day that I met Lizzie, if that had happened when I wasn't crossing the line and I was sure. somewhere over you here, I'm ready for it. Yeah. it wouldn't, I wouldn't have, been, wouldn't have been yeah. the same person. And Lizzie and I keep saying, if we met five years, 10 years earlier, never would have gotten, we right. never would have been love at first sight yeah. because I was a totally different person. Yeah. Yep. It's really that interesting is, how interesting. you think about how it has to all line up and how many factors but you have to be able to, to see be. it when it happens. Sometimes you don't see. Yes, you'll be in the right frame of mind. Right. You got to be ready for the opportunity yeah. as well, and yeah. you have to have you the might courage. Not, you might not have been in a place to even talk to her. Maybe you're dating someone else, or maybe just I don't know. Success, that, success is funny too because Daniel Kahneman won a Nobel Prize for this this sort of studying like you know why certain things happen and thinking fast and slow is his book. And, you know, he said that so much of when you look at, like, they've done all these case studies and written all these books on companies that do really well. And is it the corporate culture and stuff like that? Well, sometimes a company does really well because of what so many other companies are not doing at the moment. So, again, it's timing. Like, they happen to got, get there first. Everything was aligned the right way. Timing, and, vision. Dude, VH, VHS beta. Like, which one wins the war? Like, like, it's the timing of, hey, these things that happen – 
does it all line up and which is going to win? And in mm-hmm. your own life, what's the, what's that version of VHS versus beta? Mm-hmm. Like which way are you actually going to go and which, which, which emotion is going to prevail at the time? And I think a lot of these brink of midnight moments that happen, there's also having the courage to acknowledge, you know what? I am going to go that way. It's, it, it's scary to change things up. Yeah. It's scary whether or not it's dictated to you and you get sick in some way and you have to change course because you have your, your, your free will has been abandoned at that mm-hmm. point. Or if you say, you know what? I'm by my own free will. I'm changing course. Yeah, well, and- let me ask you before you say by my free will because you've interviewed 41 people. Of all the people, their moment, yes. right? What, how, how many of them took action out of severe discomfort or desperation i would say it's 50 50 that it's okay. it's like so one des- was inspiration the idea i can do this the other was just desperation yeah just like look you know i i'll give you a really a really good example of um rick buker who's a, a phenomenal journal sports journalist he has his own show on sirius xm he's he's one of the most famous uh sports journalists he was getting out of college and he he, he went to an ivy league um and he kind of said you know what i'm you know i'm kind of a big deal and I'm going to go over and take over New York. And he gets an interview with Esquire magazine. I never felt that way. <laughs> right. He's like, I'm, he gets an interview with Esquire magazine. He's like, Esquire. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe I'll work for that. I don't know. And he goes to the interview and he doesn't get a call back. And all of his other friends are now working on wall street and making tons of money. And he doesn't have a job yet. And the only job he can find is writing for a tiny little paper in San Diego. That's covering local football. And he's like, oh, my God. Wake up, call my reality check. He said, what (laughs) is going on? He's getting paid nothing. Uh And he's writing stories that no one is reading. And he's like in a community where nobody cares. He's like, what am I doing? Like, I thought I was going to take over the world. He said, if it weren't (laughs) for that, if it weren't for me being put in my place, I never would have wound up where I am because to this day, I do all of my own research. I write all of my own stories. I have to look for angles that are interesting that people would actually care about because I started writing about a topic that nobody was reading and nobody cared. So I had to do it all myself. And he said that moment at the time, it was just awful. He's like, it was devastating to me, but it's what made me be able to follow the road to get to where I am. You'll like this acting wise. I was, I, so I go to theater school. I'm going to be a great actor right. and I'm fucking going to do this. And now I'm like, Oh, well, you know what? Um, my dad's not really happy with me cause he's paying my rent and, uh, he's not really talking to me and, uh, I have to go get a job. So I go get a job and now I'm working as a temp at Goldman Sachs Oof. and I'm doing, I'm making copies. This yeah. is back in the day where I'm making copies and I'm running coffee. Get more coffee. Sure. I get coffee. What'd you want for lunch? Mark this down. By the way, I'm 20. I feel like that's not a job for you. No, dude. I'm, I'm writing down and I'm, I'm making copies and I smell, I remember I smell like coffee and, and printer ink every right. day, right? <laughs> so I'm trying to be an actor though. And, uh, and I, and I would take the subway home and I had to wear a suit and a tie and I would take the path. And it, you had to go under the the yep. Hudson and go to Hoboken, and um, and I'd sit there like that, and there was just I, and they were all fucking Goldman Sachs back then. They were so smart. They were all so accomplished. They were all right. like ex athletes. They were just and they all they not only were they more accomplished, they were also kind of better looking. They were all like these really <laughs> they're just like the super people. And then I I've never felt like more of a fucking spore, like a troll. And then I like I remember um, Eric goes, "Why don't you answer my phones a little differently?" I go, "Oh, how?" He goes, "Well, you're like uh, uh, Goldman Sachs, help you." I go, oh, sorry. He goes, I want you to say, this is Eric, such and such, Eric Schwartz's office. How can I help you? Goldman Sachs. He was just trying to be clear. Yeah. So you'd have to do that stuff. And I'd answer phones all fucking day. Long story short, there's an audition. Batman, they're looking for Robin. I go, my it's friend, Chris you'd O'Donnell. be great. That's right. You'd be great for... Uh, Go I marched in my agent, this terrible agent who this you know, it's like uh, one of those guys oh, with a back yeah. seat. What's your name with a roll of decks that guy? I go, I wanna be Batman. He goes, I wanna be Robin. He goes, Oh yeah? You wanna be Robin? It's already gone out, so you're not gonna be Robin. <laughs> he goes, well, what do you think? And he kinda puts me in my place, like right. he shows me like odds and all that. And odds, I'm basically fuck you. and I, he wanted he was putting me up for extra work. I was yeah. gonna do extra oh, work. Oh man. Do it <clears throat> and I'm sitting in my I'm sitting on the fucking train. And I'm looking down at these sweat beads on my forearm. It was so hot. And I and I and I was a I was a temp. And I went and I looked at myself and I said, 
I don't know for the first time in my life if this fairy tale I've been telling myself is going to come true. I don't think anything's going to happen for me unless I do something desperate. And that was when, you know, I end up saying, I'm going to just, my ex-girlfriend my, at the time said, you have to do stand up. And, and I was like, I can't do stand up. I'm terrified. I would stand up and, and then, you know, right. add to me. Cut you now. I got to piss so hard. I'm going to take a break. Go pee. I have to piss go so pee. bad. Go man. pee. Sorry, man. Go pee. Go pee. John's go pee. You keep, you keep yeah, going. go pee. Let's do it. Let's do it. Brother. Ready. You ready, Let's. Jim? Hey, that that mm. race you're talking about, was it Bighorn? It's the Barkley. Barkley? Yeah. The one that you're, look, the look it up. Hangs. Look it up. The Barkley, the Barkley Ultra Marathon. Look up Barkley. B-A-R-K. Okay. Barkley. L-E-Y. Bar- Barkley Marathon. Right there. A Barkley Ultra Marathon. It's that. <laughs> Rugby is the ultra marathon trail race held in in Frozen Head State Park uh, near Warburg, Tennessee. Runners elect a fun run of sixty miles to find their way through. It's the bark. It's called the oh, Barkley. Yeah, I found the right. wrong thing. Then I found Cameron Hayes race at Eats doing a Bighorn one hundred seventeen thousand feet elevation. Yeah, that's more, miles. Yeah, that's different. The Barkley he's marathon. He's done both is of you're those. Talking about. So he's okay. trying to, the he's Barkley. The, look at Barkley ultra marathon. Then say um, uh, say finisher. Okay, and look. There hasn't been many. There you go. And click on the Wikipedia link of that. Yeah, there hasn't been many Barkley. This is the Barkley Marathon. It's a front and full of over 100 miles. The race is approximately a 60 hour period. And then it's uh, in the description of the. It's limited to 40 runners every year. And it's tough to get in, too. You have to do some weird. No, you have to know where to show up. You have nowhere to show up. You have to send the guy who runs it an essay or something, right? Yeah, you have to show up. The course registration timing other requirements. Look, it starts any time from midnight to ruin on race day. You don't know when it starts. So it's this guy that made up this crazy idea, and it's just caught, it's like this cult now. Here it is. So requirements and uh, submit let's, entry let's applications are closely guarded, Did secret, with no details, advertised publicity. Yeah. Potential entrants must let's, complete an essay on why I should be allowed to run in the Barkley and pay a dollar sixty. Are you rolling? Are you rolling? We're rolling. We're rolling. Okay. We're rolling. It's oh, we're called live. the Barkley Marathon. Yeah, cool. See, the, I, the, the I know you got to watch the documentary on it. There's a documentary that's how you can get it on Netflix, iTunes, wherever. It's, so it's crazy. pretty. It's pretty. Ma- it's just insane. The cutoff time for the hundred mile race is twelve hours. There's a guy who finished it. I heard uh, Cam talk on. I think it was Rogan's podcast about it. He's talking about some guy finished. You know, you have ten hours, right? Twelve hours. He finished twelve hours and five seconds, and they, he, he he didn't get his award. Right. Wow. The full five loop race course has been completed 18, 18 times by 15 runners Dude, in, the, in its history. Oh, my God. Which is God. pretty nuts, right? Look, it dates back to 1995 as the first finisher. Jared Campbell did it <laughs> twice. And look at. Bring up Jared Campbell. I want to see what he looks like. Yeah, look at the number of years there are no. There's nobody who finished Nothing. It. Like, it's. Look at that. From Brent, 95 Brent to 2001, Manning. nobody finished it. <laughs> wow. It's like hilarious. You gotta watch the documentary. It's really good. Really, it's 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 a really interesting thing. But it's it's part of that example of tapping into human beings think they can do anything, right? And it's anything is possible. And this is sort of you know the ultimate expression of that. It's a smaller fella. Yeah, I wonder what yeah. the, what the profile oh, yeah. is, the physical profile for that is of the people who can do it. Yeah, like like there's got to be some it, kind of a physical thing that you have advantage, or maybe it's just, it's way more mental than physical. Yeah, way I'm sure, more way more. Mental. Can suffer yeah. longer than yeah. most yeah. people. Yeah. And it's, I mean, you could, if mentally you, you could do it, B. It's not a, a it's physical trait. Like, I could do it. I'm right. a big dude. I could 100% do if it. I, it's your mindset. Yeah. Mindset. If I said you'll pay you a billion dollars right now to go run 300 miles, you'd, you'd be like, it. you'd get up right now and you'd run 300 miles. Right. You're going to do it. You're like, I'm not stopping. Yeah. I'm getting it's not a some dollars. physical or they weren't <laughs> right. born different than right. you. They just, they yeah. They have a just, reason. They're beast. Well, it, no, but just mentally, they're, they, you know, a lot of people, I don't think they can deal with it. Lot, there's a lot more people, they're mentally tougher than you are. Mm-hmm. They're just, they're able to just they, do things that you can't Well, and they always, say, they always say that they're able to not, they're really good at learning what not to think about. So that they, when they're running, they're not thinking about the pain. They're just thinking about, you know, so they're keeping they, it really. They, I love to analogize this. The, the brain is the greatest computer ever invented and it can figure out anything mm-hmm. if you allow it to. Mm-hmm. So I love, I love using the example of golf. If you will, if you, you can stand over a white ball that's still with a crooked, you know, a, a crooked metal stick and figure out an indeterminate distance how far to hit it. If you allow your brain to do it, the issue is when you you ever like see like an amateur golfer just step up, not think about it, and crush it. And you're yep. like, 
wow, how's that? Because they don't know what they're doing. And then what happens is your brain gets in the way. It's yeah. getting the yips. You on start a learning what butt. to do wrong. Right. Like you, when, once you and, know what what is wrong about the swing, you're going to be, sometimes you find yourself aiming toward that. And when you think about, think about even in the fighting world, right? When you let your brain get out of the way, like if you're thinking too much, oh, you're, screwed. You're, you're totally screwed, yeah. right? Yeah. You have to allow yourself to be free. And what moves should you do next is something that's a natural occurrence that your brain has figured out because Brandy Couture uh, coined the phrase kinetic chess. Yep. He said, it's all kinetic chess. And it's the, if this endless scenario of if then um, events that are happening in a split second. Mm-hmm. And it's not something that you're consciously thinking about. It's something that you let your mind free because it knows, oh, if this, then that, and you allow it to happen. Mm-hmm. I think that's true in, in even in ultra marathon. Sure. It's like, look, if I just get out of the way of my mind and don't think about how much pain I'm in and don't try to overthink this. It, what's interesting is when we were talking about nutrition in these events, uh, Lizzie uh, ran the um, Leadville 100, 100 miles in Leadville, Colorado, it starts at 10,000 feet of elevation. It's the highest point um, uh, for starting, a starting point in, um, in, the, in the country. When you, the winner that year that Lizzie ran it was literally didn't carry any nutrition, just went aid station to aid station and had water. <laughs> and that was that, and over 100 miles. Yeah. And I'm like, that's, that's kind of my point is that yeah. we're like a lot of people have camelbacks and they're weighing it down and you're trying to run. You have all this extra weight and you're taking in goo and food and stuff and your body's trying to pro- do too much. Just let your mind get well, out of the like way. Well, it's like people who are health nuts. Yeah. They're always kind of sick. I mean, they, you know, our right. health nuts are always, there's always something wrong. Whereas right. like you see people who just don't never think about it and right, they're just right. fucking they're healthy. They never, they never miss a day of work. Right. You're like, God damn it. Right. All right. Let's go yeah. to the current, current events. events. Current events. Current events. Current events. Current events. First one is a 53-year-old guy fought a 21-year-old person within an hour's notice. I guess the guy's opponent probably fell out. Mm -hmm. And then he ended up, the rumor is that the guy is actually the illegitimate father of the kid that he fought. Or the illegitimate son. Wow. Wow. So was it a is a professional sanctioned fight and like yo this this has to be in Arkansas or some shit somewhere around yeah there. and he's all hey we need an opponent and some old dude was like I'll do it I'll do it he was just there to watch and then he beat the shit out of the sun he did and he did guess who filmed the this this footage here who the other check son. it out Wait. well this is a father <laughs> potentially the father beating up the kid I don't know. And then I'll pause it. Right That's so what, what's the question? Is this real? So Stefan Bonner was the one filming it. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I haven't heard from him. I haven't heard the name Stefan Bonner forever. Right. Are we wondering if this is real or not? Or are I'm, we just taking it at face value? Yeah, let's see the punch again. Because it, well, if I'm you look not... in the beginning, they do actually fight legit. Oh, that dad is... Oh, <laughs> oh the, the old down. man goes down. Yeah, that's definitely not a fixed fight. All right. That's that's not well, wait. Hold on. All right. No, that's legit stuff. All right. Dad's tough. So wait, dad's never fought before? Ever? I have no history uh, on I would say guys. no. Look at dad. <laughs> no. No, look at dad's technique. I don't know what's going on here. Dad. So wait, now dad's pissed. <laughs> Hands up, dad. Wait, so dad's going to tag him right here. Hands up, dad, Brian says. Right. Hands up. I don't know. Uh oh, he's. So how did we? Is it true? Is he the father? Yeah. Did we find out if he's it's legit? Dad? I couldn't find anything legitimate online, but that's the rumor that hey, Dad looked like he was smiling before he did that. Let me see. And that. the yeah. more I'm looking at this video, it kind of looks a little. Dad, no, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, wait, wait, hold on. Why would this get any publicity at all? Like, who would find out this story and <laughs> videotape it and post Maybe it? Because Stephen Bonner's attached to it. I don't know. It feels a little convenient, doesn't it? It's like very some strange. guy one hour. It and sounds it's very son. WWE. It does. It's a weird. Oh like, no, we got a opponent out. Anyone in the crowd want to do and this? Now, and now we're talking about look some. Look at this. Is like like a backyard brawl. It's He's well, hit. He's it's lo- hit. it's low level fighting for yeah. sure, but they're not faking it. No, they're getting hit. I I, I think it, it was all staged, I, I, but that's a real fight. Yeah. Okay. I think it's staged, but they're actually hitting but each other. But they're hitting each other in yeah. the face. Yeah, I think all that's that. staged, but it, you know. Well, but do you think that, like, because it looked like dad could have could have been done, could have been finished. Do you think they were like, well, fight within reason, but dad's got to win? 
I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I didn't it know seems, it seems a little. This convenient. whole thing is a shit show. Right? <laughs> this whole thing. I think this. Terrible. This to me, I'm going to raise my hand and say it's a little too convenient. Uh, yeah, I, I'm skeptical I'm sure. as I'm well. Skeptical. But uh, you know, stuff Papa did fucking eat what? a shot there. And drink, Papa got hit in the face. Papa punch. got hit, and, and and the son got hit. Yeah, right? yeah. I, they, which he deserved. It was definitely I mean, set yeah. up. You know, for, it was all it was, set up. Like, why would this make a headline? I think it's too convenient. That's my opinion. Stephen Bucks. I like it. Next event. Next event. Well, you guys already know about this. Yeah. So, um, Big Black died. And this is the most recent thing I found on it. His ex-wife said mm-hmm. that he was in the hospital for a heart condition anyways. And he, his doctor was saying that he may need a new heart. Damn. Wow. It's such a bummer, man. It's a huge bummer. He, he was such around. a good dude. And on our show, he's such a just a positive spirit. Yeah. And, but the thing with him and you know and Rob and you see Rob did that heartfelt message just like man I, I hate to I can't broken. believe I'm even writing this my heart's broken and people are like oh the beef between Rob and Big all that goes out the window man like that doesn't that yeah. carries no weight here it's just such a bummer yeah, such such a bummer definitely a reminder to seize the day yeah such a know. a huge UFC fan just uh yeah. you know a guy. You talk about your brink of midnight. You'd been a good guest for you. Talking about a guy who was a security guard right. who ends up being, you know, the biggest reality show on MTV ever, Robin Big, yep. and he's, you know, one part of that, right? And then takes that, turns into a clothing mogul, yeah. And then goes from there, and it's just, it's a great story, man. Yeah. Hmm. Well, rest in peace. That's a bummer. That is a bummer. Yeah. Forty-five right. years old too. Not really old. old. Five but, years you know, younger than me, guys. Re- really out same of same age as me. You know, really out of shape. Yeah. And you, I, I don't know if it's on. You have Chris. Uh, you have Chris Berman's wife. Do you hear about yeah. that? No, it's, it's, died in a car accident. No, today. Try, and Berman just retired. Just retired. Just died retired. In a car accident. I mean, it's in it, Connecticut. It, it's it's so sad. I've had I've had the great fortune of of uh, you know meeting and, and yeah, he's Chris great. Berman a lot. He's I mean, great. he's just such a great, especially yeah. to someone like me. And I you know oh, gone man. up to him several times and said, without you, I mean, think about what the pioneer he was of changing the way that sport was oh, being yeah. brought to you mm-hmm. of creating expressions and emotion and personality yeah. yep. in a way that we'd never seen. And he's such an oh, amazing a influence. Bummer, and I told him, you know, it's like, oh. I never would have done what I, what, what I've done in my professional career if it weren't for Chris. Dude, I, was, I was he, at a, I was at an ESPN terrible. party and he was there and we were talking and some, these two fans got in there and they're like, Chris, Oh my God. Yeah. You know? And he talked to these dr- two drunk bros for probably 30 minutes. Yeah. They're just asking about ESPN and yeah, sports. Yeah. And he's, he's a great guy. That's it's so, so, so tragic. Man. That's it's tragic. Time. Again, you know, it's, it's, I mean, it's hard to make sense of. It's all we can do is seize the day and, you know, pray for the best and mm. pray for those who are less fortunate than we are. That's terrible. Mm. Uh, yeah. Anyways, what all else right. you got, Chen? All right. The next one. The next one. Is The Rock. He said in an article with GQ on. that he's actually taking it seriously that he would consider being running for president uh, in 2020, I believe it was. I think this is a problem. I don't, I don't think it's good. I think Donald Trump opened this door and now others, so let's be real, that's what Donald Trump is. Now other people are going, oh shit, if he can do it, I'm more famous than Donald Trump. But you know what? I can do it too. I, but I'm going to, the only reason why I'm going to disagree is that's a bad thing mm-hmm. is I think, it's, I think it's the way that it was supposed to be set up to begin with. Right, it wasn't supposed to be just a class of politician, and there was it was supposed to be. Well, a, the founding fathers always said George Washington. I mean, they, they always said that you know, this was uh, the our democracy was supposed to be able to be run by ordinary men. Right, right? and you, um, and, and I want an ordinary man that up. knows what he's doing. Mm. Right, but I, we, but, that's, but, that's, but let, let, let's say this. Let, let's say this. We, whatever the Trump experiment is for the country, and that if there has ever been a brink of midnight moment in this country, <laughs> it is Donald Trump. Yeah. Right? For better or worse, we all are we're sort of having it. it. We're figuring yeah. out, gosh, should we put someone like that in the Oval Office? And the answer right now is, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I mean, it like he just, fi- just fired Comey, yeah. you know, just a few months ago. All the Democrats were saying Comey should be fired. Comey should be fired. I can't believe how how now he's, he's messing the election. And they're all going, "Hey, you yeah. know, you fucking you did messed this. up. It's you did because they're finding stuff out about Russia, yeah. Yeah. which is bogus too. Because the FBI is a huge place, and there's it did, when you fire the the uh, the director, you think all the goes away. You think the Russian investigation because yeah. yeah. it just yeah. goes right. with that guy. Yeah. You don't think there's right. hundreds of other people? Comey made a lot of miscalculations, like holding a press conference and stuff. But you know, um, 
I, I don't feel as uneasy about The Rock, and I'll tell you why. Oh, I think he God. happens to be highly intelligent, highly effective. Because he's and, a successful actor? Oh, yeah. He's, I, think he's, I think he's highly... I think he works very hard. I think he's very intelligent. And I think someone like The Rock is somebody who probably could learn quickly. And I th- but we've I, seen this I, I experiment. Think, How is he any seen, different than Arnold Schwarzenegger? Well, he's not. Arnold Schwarzenegger was, I mean, a fairly effective governor. So he's do you want him as your president? I would have voted for Schwarzenegger. There are a lot of things I agreed about. I think the I like yeah. the idea. I, We've what seen I, this experiment. I we but we haven't seen the result of the experiment in terms of president. We need to wait. We need to wait some time. We're You've early seen into a small this. Donald Trump is a very bad example. I mean, I've never though. been a but fan it, of Trump because of his I, narcissism. But I think that someone like The Rock is somebody. I don't know what his education level is, right? And I don't know. You also don't I, know. Him, does though. it? Does that? I don't know him, but I you know from the movies and interviews. No, which is I'm impressed. No, no, but I'm also impressed with his level of uh, how effective he is. He seems to be a very effective communicator, which is a huge part of being a president. Uh, he seems to exercise good judgment just based on the choices he's made. He stays out of trouble. Um, and I don't know. I think if, if my feeling about this is if he's the kind of guy that wants to run for president, it sounds like he's interested in politics. I haven't seen any evidence We're of that. We're assuming that. Yeah. Kanye West said he wants to run. That, I'd have a problem with that. How is he any different than The Rock? I think for me, Kanye West is They're both narcissists. Let's just get that out of the way. Well, oh, there's a difference. I think that for me, Kanye West is somebody who's not only a narcissist, but I think Kanye West seems erratic, right? He seems like he just goes off the deep end in one, one instance and then off the deep end in another. So I can't track his brain. And I, and I, so with Kanye, it would be, make more sense that it seems like he's more interested in – and I think I've given him a fair shake and listened to a lot of what he said – uh, I, I feel like he's more interested in the fame it would bring, whereas maybe The Rock. I, I guess I want to vote for somebody. I don't somebody think it's, I don't think it's fair to assume The Rock has the, here, the, the best the, intentions. He's not doing it for fame and he knows politics right. because he's great in Fast Furious 8 and he's made good career decisions as an actor. Is it really I about The Rock? I think you have to be real though. careful about mm-hmm. it. Is this really about The Rock? To me, it's, this is not about The Rock. This is about the fact that in our minds now as Americans, it's, a possibility. it's possible. Yeah. <laughs> well, when Kanye West said, I was like, yeah, I mean, he probably I mean, he might yes, win. Yes, like, yeah, yeah, he wouldn't win, you know, he's kind of like he'd win the popular it's vote. Breaking the, the Rock has a mile. chance because people like him so much. Yeah, but it's Maybe. this is breaking the four minute mile. Donald Trump broke the four minute mile. Now everyone's like, hey, I can do that. Why not? Why not? Why not? Why me? not? Why but not don't, me? don't you think the more likely scenario is somebody who comes from a far more modest background that seems to be like to have answers? What yeah. about Oprah? Like it seems like. I don't. Well, yeah, oh, I would vote for Oprah. But of course would, you would. Would Oprah? Where really we stop at celebrities? It? I know. Why the fuck don't I'm Tony Robbins? No, wait a minute. Who would vote for Tony there, Robbins? There are big differences. Tony though. Robbins' story is no, insane. No, no, no. There, there are big differences. I mean, so so Oprah is somebody who I happen to think is highly intelligent and yeah. and has exposed who herself. Yeah, that's but great. She's also, right. But that's but, she, but no, but she's exposed herself to a lot of what has been thought and said in the best of ways with good intentions. Right. She's also she's also made differences. Like Oprah Winfrey like, deliberately said, I'm going to have a show that is based on education and inspiration, you know, with our Oprah b- book club and stuff. So someone like Oprah, who's eminently reasonable and a thinker, it, I would feel way more comfortable in. My problem has always been with Donald Trump that he's about himself first and foremost to a pathological degree. Right. And we, I issue. think that's why you can't have a celebrity be present. I think... I'm, I love The Rock, narcissist. I like Kanye West, narcissist. Oprah Winfrey, narcissist. Tony Robbins, narcissist. To get to that level of fame and, and to to really be successful in entertainment, you have to be a bit of a narcissist. Well, do you or do you have to be somebody who, like, for example, Tony Robbins seems to be actually not so much a narcissist. Tony Robbins seems to be a guy who studied the human brain and how human beings behave and got really good at affecting change in large groups of people. I mean, I, this is somebody who I listen to all his tapes, ready to make fun of him, and was swayed in a big way. I was very from impressed. the documentary. Don't no, 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 no. From I listened to all his tapes back in the day because I was writing a, a movie yeah. about a, a guru. So, 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 someone like that might be a little bit different because someone like Tony Robbins, I think, is driven by the idea that he wants to end human suffering. He right. is. I mean, you can call him idealistic. He thinks he's guided, and that's his drive, and that's what drives him. He's got more money than God. Um, so it's maybe it's worth a almost a less... billion dollars. Yeah. Here, here's what I would say. Again, this isn't about Dwayne Johnson. And I think my opinion, I think the next outsider that becomes president, I, I like that idea that it's not just another politician. It's an outsider, but I think it would be an un, unlikely person that we don't even know of today. 
that we all as a country are going to really listen now. We're going to say, you know what? We need to not be caught up by just the little headlines and the little social media. We need to actually listen to what people are saying. And that next person, that next outsider, and their intention. is someone who we go, you know what? They're not super famous. They're not super rich. They sound I know, but see, super but, but, intelligent. What, what Brennan's saying, and I and get catch it, fire. is that you got to be careful not to be attracted to what's shining. Yeah. So right. just and that's he's an entertainer that's what doesn't mean Well, you would probably feel more mean comfortable. He's, yeah, does you, it you mean he makes good politician? Right. You'd be more comfortable probably right. the way I would with somebody who, who, for example, was a really good businessman and killed it in the business or, world. Or, even, or, even, the or even a guy, granted, this is far to the left, but even a guy like Elon Musk, right. who has this crazy right. idea, doesn't want to be famous. Right. You don't see him out in the tablet. He's innovative. Like he's thoughtful. Right. He knows how the economy works. He's had to deal you with know? the economy. Like that, I know. But a saying. lot of those people, right, you're, who, you're are, right. I mean, who are even richer than Trump, a lot yeah. of people who are like super famous, they're going to see this experiment and say, why would I want to do that? Right. The, the, see, right. that's like, the thing. Why, the why smartest would I do that? people are going. Stay out of the my line. life is like, great. What? Why would? I, and you heard Trump. Donald say, Trump. I even. missed my. I missed yeah, my old life. I fucked up. Yeah. Yeah. People, Howard Stern talks about it. Howard Stern was talking about how you know he gets paid whatever three hundred seventy five million dollars from Sirius. He has the life. He goes to the studio. He owns everything. Right. It's but life is great. Then America got talent. He goes, we'd love for you to do this show. And he goes. Why not? And people are like, I, it's a big commitment. It's, ah, a lot. it's a cool experiment. And I'm trying to just, next thing you know, I'm on set fucking four days a week. Yeah. I'm missing this right. stuff. Now I'm sitting around in my trailer for three hours a day while <laughs> this lady gets her makeup on and I've got all these commitments. He goes, I fucked up, man. I feel like Trump's the same way. Yeah. It looks good from the outside. Yep. Then when you actually you're into it, you're like, oh it's my God, work. I right. messed up my life. America's got talent. The White House. Same I example. Wouldn't be surprised <laughs> similar. Out, right. I wouldn't be surprised if Trump does not run a uh, for a second term. Absolutely <laughs> not. Like, I gotta think, get back to my And life. Ivanka Trump hasn't, um, she's been in the White House once and then they're good. And now he's barely there. The weekends, they're, they're yeah, out. Yeah, they're Milan, like, what Milan, the fuck? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When, when he comes in and says, we're going to fix it all right away. And then it's like, oh man, I need cooperation. <laughs> but yeah. then also oh, remember, he goes, he goes from this penthouse he's living in to the White House. Where right, old right. Been, Big downgrade. His kids are like, oh, what the <laughs> hell Dude, We went this? there, we were like, these rooms are tiny. It was old. I mean, a guy like that's, that's like funny. this is a down after a while you'd be I'm like here for the four fuck out years here. i signed a four-year lease uh, yeah. on this old ass house <laughs> you're around yeah. everybody's around you all the time you have no privacy also, i want to know pay could, cut huge pay cut huge lots pay of cut. stress oh, yeah. a lot of stress and could he actually renovate the white house like what's the protocol absolutely not <laughs> absolutely you can't touch you're leasing <laughs> that place but we don't like does anybody you, does you anybody can, look at the contract and say no you like, can you're allowed to put furniture the desk stays in over right. you're allowed to put your own furniture in certain places the wallpaper no way no 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 you no way. Things, like, can I add there, a wing? No, hold on, hold on. When you say no, he can't. Here's the question: Can Donald Trump change the wallpaper? No. When you say no, he can't. Well, then who can? He can do whatever the fuck he wants. Well, I, don't, <laughs> you th- I don't think. What do you so. mean? There's some there's other certain things like, he, he can't put in. Like he can make the Oval Office like a nightclub. And put like a no, but I'm sure there's some kind of approval TVs. process. I'm just saying. There's somebody in the world who can say, you know what, we need to change. It's the a carpet. committee. The carpet no, no, committee. is a little no, you're worn. Allowed to. So, so all the so we need to change. Well, Obama put in a basketball court, right? Yeah, yeah. Typically, you can. And as put, soon as Donald got out, he's like, oh, get that yeah. shit out of here. Yeah. I just want. I'd love to. I, I don't know the answer to that question. I wonder what the policy. I want to know what is the policy of changing the decor. Like if I wanted in, a bowling in the bedroom. alley in there. Well, there is an answer. So you can change the decor. So you can come in with your own uh, drapes, your own. Uh, uh, so every first Structurally, lady you can't, traditionally though. would come in. Structurally, no, no, you no, no, you're not. Well, he said he's no, 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 add, I want to add a, a top you're not, deck. You're not raising the roof. <laughs> hey, here's another question. <laughs> Just hear me out here. Here's another question. Go on. Let's say uh, The Rock ran for president and he's a single man. And he wants to have a couple, <laughs> couple ladies every night. He's Just single. Sign in. He's not doing anything. Can, he, can you do that? Here's the other question. Can he put a mirror on the ceiling? Yeah, and fur coats. Who knows? Oh, yeah, and that Barbara Bush wears. Uh, yep. What else you got, Jen? All right, the next one is a study about marijuana. So they did this study in Germany, and it was a group of mice, young mice, <laughs> mature mice, and then super old mice. And apparently, in the old mice, it helped their brain. Brain? Yeah. How so? I'm not. There was like a cannabinoid yeah. thing that gets re- reenacted in your brain. Yeah. That helps with cognitive behavior. Can I, can I raise yes, my hand yes. on this? Let me just raise my hand in all the all the marijuana studies. Pro or, pro or con marijuana guy? Me? Yeah. I'm kind of neutral. I don't. I I have, I don't drink alcohol, caffeine. I do drugs of no kind. So I'm kind. Of, I'm just like a water. You don't and, care. Water and yeah. no processed food. Like I and I honestly, when it comes to marijuana, I think it's. I personally feel like 
the fact that there are people in jail for a long silly, time silly. over something like this is like, look, there, there are bigger issues. But here's my, my issue that I have with studies like this. They're, they have marijuana and then they have no marijuana. Aren't there a gazillion other things we could also test to see yes. yeah. what kind of results they yes. produce? And when you say, wow, marijuana, let them eat, you know, last longer. Is there something else that's better than marijuana? Yeah. So first of like, all, let's so, not get so, so ahead you, of ourselves. You bring up a really good point because the bottom line is you have to draw causality. So right. all these studies are science is the process of, of, of explaining what we observe, right? I heard that on Sam per- Harris's podcast, so I'm stealing it. But but you, causality is very, very difficult because there are so many other mitigating circumstances. Right. So you have to take into account so many other different things. So when you draw these correlations based on mice, first of all, human bodies work very differently. It's just take it all with a grain of salt, man. Right. Because it's really difficult to establish causality. They've it, done so many studies on humans and you've got to make sure other things are staying still and they're never staying still. And you also especially have to look at Who's doing the study? What's the motivation behind it? Who, there's a lot of money Who's to be made. It? Yeah, there's a lot of money to be made. I mean, if you look at look at yeah. articles from the 1950s of how awesome cigarette smoking is, it has no mm-hmm. effect on you. It's look, un- there's also there's you know, also a like, lot of studies that show that, that that THC and cannabis oil and can help in, in stopping tumors. And then there's a lot of studies that can say it can help in not doing anything at all to them. It all depends. Look, if you look if you look up the placebo effect, yeah, it's strong. you'll find a lot of a lot of studies yes. that show that. Placebos are as effective as chemotherapy sure. in yeah. treating cancer. Yeah. So when we look at this marijuana study, mm-hmm. you're kind of you find. can set up anything and find what you want to. So find. what do you believe then? What should you believe about these studies? They're just I, all full of shit. I, I think I think we all need to have a healthy sense of skepticism on quote on studies everything. that are released on, yes. on on either direction. Moderation. I just think How you about have, moderation. I, like to me, well, life is really simple. Like eat like it. It's common sense what you should eat. Don't live off of cotton candy, mm-hmm. right? Don't live off of marijuana. It right? also depends like, on your duh, body, by yeah. the way. Like, just don't, like I, I don't not do what you're well only weed, doing, right? So if I smoke weed, I'm a complete idiot. Like I could never drive on weed, and I know people that smoke weed every day and are very highly functioning. I, my body type, my chemistry doesn't work with with THC. I'm a disaster. Well, I don't know about that, but if you did it as much as they did, you would get more used to it. Maybe. Yeah. Really I don't like type. the way it feels, though. You well, know? but you yeah. don't do it very much. So if you just do it once and go, oh, it's my body doesn't react well to this. But if you did as much as these people you're talking about, yeah, a body. I, I, I just don't think I would be. I could function for the mice. Like boobs, for the for this know? mice study, I would just raise my hand and say, a healthy sense of skepticism. Yeah, that's what I would say. For I'm, sure, I'm not. There, this is not the it. be all end all. And like, oh, you sure. should, you absolutely need this. To what live I do longer. think is ridiculous that Roger Goodell won't even entertain the idea that marijuana helps a lot of players. Yeah, but then, they'll, I mean, then they'll prescribe all sorts of horrible painkillers. My my, that's the issue I have. When you go, nope, right. you can't do that, but you can't take that. Yeah, but, but I would, we and, know. And here's and why we know for a fact that, that is worse for your body than marijuana. And shut your right, We know for a fact, and you won't even entertain it. Here, but. The view to me on the proper view on call it what I mean, PEDs, whatever, it, whatever it is, is if there's enough science behind it that we all can say, yeah, you know what? Vitamin C is good for you. Like we, we know vitamin C is good for you. Like we all can agree on that. If you say, yeah, ib- ibuprofen reduces inflammation. And we, if we can say, yeah, aspirin acts as a mild blood thinner, we can all agree on that. You're allowed to take these certain things that we all agree on. Marijuana, we're not there as a society. We're not there as a country. So because- Roger Goodell is overseeing a national product and he can't take just state laws into account of saying it's legal in debt in Colorado, but it's not legal right. in another state. You know, he, he's got to look but, at the national we, picture. And you can look at the national picture and there's more deaths from those prescribed painkillers. I, I, I agree with you a million percent on that. That then that's something we won't even society. entertain it though. Right. The only problem play, when you, is a whole other when thing. When you have players going this, this will make me play better on Thursday. It helps my pain, my inflammation, I don't give a fuck what the mouse study says or whatever you believe. This helps me, which is a better product on the field, which pays you more money. But Goodell, instead of but saying, it's, federal, Goodell, it's federally against the law, so he can't make that judgment. He can't make the ju- He's yeah. running a national organization. Yeah, but the judgment yeah. he makes is to, to, is to find those players and to not let them play that they test positive for, like a Joshua Cribs, who's a Hall of Fame, or who's right. an all pro player. Uh, here, how about this? I think it should That's be illegal. I think, I think weed should be legal, and then we won't have this issue. But um, 
I, I do think he's he might be in a rock and a hard place because he's got to then sanction something that's federally illegal and he has a responsibility. Yeah, there, to it, we, we haven't as a country we haven't settled this. I mean, yeah. st- especially it's with tough. Trump in the White House, it's a he's a very yeah, I mean, anti marijuana so guy. Session. The issue is they're, so they're session, taking old weird. kind of the the old issues on on stoners and potheads. And then just right. be like, no, I won't even look at right. that. I've been around I, those guys in high school. It's like, you're 60. Right. Of course, I know you were. Times have changed now. Totally. Well, whatever. I, I will look at this with skepticism. Well, they All did right. stress that it is it is in mice. It's not in humans. The test. Right. And they're also saying that the, the good part of it is it's helping the older mice, not the younger mice. Right. So it's actually helping the brains of the older mice. Yeah, I've heard marijuana for, for like, you know, 16 to really 26 can be trouble, man. Really? Can, okay, because your body's developing, right? Well, How about this? Developing. If it's not can, just not naturally in you, like if it's it, like you think about it, it of course, especially the way that we're ingesting anything externally, right? It's smoking is bad for you no matter what. That's a b ingesting it and being like, wow, it's altering the way that I feel. Yeah. There has to be some. It's kind a drug. Of, it's a drug. It's a right. Does an apple all of a sudden you're like, wow, I'm feel totally different. <laughs> like if you all of a There's sudden mushrooms change your though, state, you can eat. Yeah. There are, but there are mushrooms that make you feel perfectly normal and mushrooms that make you hallucinate. Correct. And obviously those hallucinations, if you just extrapolate out and say, if I did this all the time, every day, nonstop, will there be any negative repercussions? Yeah. Probably. Ha- probably. I- I've if always said that. An, I, if you yeah. eat an apple every hour on the on the hour, every day, nonstop, do nothing, there's probably some kickback from If apples. I do three Maybe. shots, you know? if I do like, three shots. shredded like Herschel Walker. Yeah, who knows? If I do three shots, it's going to be of grain alcohol. Chances are it's going to have... An effect if, on my. If on you drink water judgment. too much of it, you'll dilute your electrolytes and die. Yeah. Right? Yeah, that's There's, anything. It's, I mean, it's like moderation. anything. Like, it, like, it, like, like everything. Everything in moderation, and obviously, if it alters your state of mind, there's probably some kind of repercussion. Well, we tend to swing back and forth in this much. country, like it's either all this or all that. Like, We're John Brankus, basically, in this country. We are, and that's why <laughs> I. Che- and when you we asked me my opinion on it, like I'm, I'm a, I don't touch anything of any kind because I know I'd be an awful, terrible drug addict because I'd be like all in. Yeah, you'd be dead. I'd be like, like, like wow, I feel OD, amazing. Yeah. I'm all in, and that's that's not my <laughs> life. So I'm like, I'm not gonna have anything because yeah. I know I can't control myself. Yeah. What else you got, Chin? You good on time? John's got yeah, to run. I, yeah, I need uh, I have uh, five minutes. <laughs> All right, cool. Let's, Let's do two more. Two more. Mm-hmm. A climber was caught trying to sneak through Mount Everest without paying for his permit. And he was found inside a, hiding inside a cave. And the permit would have cost about like $8,000. Damn, mm-hmm. it cost $8,000 to, to climb yeah. Mount Everest? I didn't know that. He made it to 21,000 feet. Who found him caught. is my question. Hey, what patrol hey, is up there? Who well, no, who was like, hold on, did you pay? <laughs> right. Uh, uh, yeah, I did. Well, give me a There's second. A, a, ra- yeah. a ranger up there going, where's your permit? Yeah. <laughs> what kind of Jeez. dick ranger is I was going to say. <laughs> they found him, him at 8,000, <laughs> hold on, 30,000 foot this in the air. American? Who, is wait, where's this guy from? Uh, what was it? South African. Fucking South, South, South African. So wait, he had to get to, he had to fly from South, I mean, it was really expensive. Also, right? hiding in a cave, cave, you're like, not getting there cheaply. Yeah, and hiding in a cave, like we see you. You're not, you're not like <laughs> ah, nothing to see here. Was he in it's the cave? The other guy was he in the cave with his hand over his eyes, going, "You can't see me," freezing his ass <laughs> off. So he said, it, uh, he goes, I am going to be honest in saying that when I arrived at base camp, it became evident that I didn't have nearly enough money for a solo permit because of hitting costs. And even if I did, they would have declined it because I had no previous mountaineering experience on my record. Well, that's, it so that's total, one of the reasons they do yeah. it. They don't want you to go up there and die. Right. It would have been a total embarrassment to turn around and I sent defeat. I accept defeat because of a piece of paper. Because so, I was ashamed that I couldn't afford the permit after all the help, so, preparation, what everybody had done for so, me during my training. Right. So wait, hold on. If he if he turned around, no one ever knows that he even tried. Now everybody knows he tried and failed, and it's all over the internet. But also, like, if you're going to go hunting, you get your uh, hunting license. Yeah. You have to. You go, like, there's certain things like, hey, hey. Make sure you got the thing that you need. Yeah, like, yeah. It's a checklist. What do I need? Hat, hat, gloves, gloves. Hey, hold on. He has no idea. He had no idea that he had enough money because of hit, <sighs> like hidden, like, whatever. Yeah. Like, see, this is to me. This is silly. Next. Next. Damn. He says my passport has been confiscated, and apparently I'm in for jail time. Silly for climbing a mountain with no money. Well, it's people silly. lose a lot of money when they don't pay, right? Like the all the Sherpas that have to work there and all that stuff. Those so Sherpas, he's you trying to get away like without paying ice cubes. I know, I know. But, it, but this whole thing, this is just all about a guy. I mean, he wasn't doing this as a publicity stunt. This is just a guy not just thinking things through. Yeah, he didn't think things through before doing it. Like, yeah. duh. Yeah. What else you got? It's probably not yeah. the first time he's fucked up. Yeah. Mm, let's see. 
<laughs> How about I this one? Care. So P. Diddy had a chef that he would always request her to come in and feed him after or during sex with a bunch of different girls. And he would be naked. And now she's, <laughs> she's suing him because he fired her for allegedly stealing a watch. But apparently the girl was like complaining to another attendant saying like, oh, this is what's happening. This is, this is abuse. So the attendant found a way to, to rig it so that she was accused of stealing the watch. Yikes. So they make it seem like she got fired for stealing? Yeah. Hold on. Let me get this straight. He's just having tons of sex with different girls. She'd bring him his chicken wings. No, hashtag no racist or whatever. He Don't, would make her do steak, it. Steak, whatever. And then she would have to hook up with him too? No, no, no. She would oh, make, okay. He would make her come in during sex or right after sex when everyone's naked. Yeah, and, with electrolytes and, and shit. Girl, did, you got a good gig. You got a good gig. I don't see I, the problem here. Oh, I, I guess think, she she's mad that she, and she's upset so she's whistleblowing now. I don't I mean I don't know. The like these yeah. kind of these kind of stories are the exact kind of stories that don't interest me all that much. You what know, kind like, do? Really? Like Well, like, you 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 can't talk about it, but I know you as as the owner of a business have been sued for the dumbest shit on the planet. <laughs> Well, like every business owner, shit. every business owner at some point encounters stuff where you're like, "What? Yeah, you like that? Like, it. what are you talking about?" And you, and and you then, realize how evil they, people are. Yeah, uh, yeah, and when I when I say like, the longer you own a you own a business, the more clearly you see the evil that men do. That yeah. you go, "What? Like, are you kidding me? These kind of stories, I, like, don't even enter my mind because, I, like, I don't know who's telling the truth on whatever and You've had what's to deal happening, with it. and I don't. But I, also, I, so, I don't know. So Pete what. did he wants a recovery shake after he gets balls even a few girls, right? He gave him his protein That's shit. your job. Yeah. You got to be replenished. Yeah. I need my vitamins. Yeah, uh, lady. I, I get, get this. <laughs> I, wait. I, I need my vitamins. Co- take that. Take that. Co- so coconut water, him. girl. Oh, be- there you go. Hey, you're welcome. This is no, for you. John, a John didn't come on the show. Sorry. I didn't come on the show for that. Yeah, right. good douche. No, is done. that it, too? That's, That's it. That's it. Boom. Frank he did. He keep doing your thing. Hey guys, Brank of Midnight is the podcast. This it Monday, this iTunes. Monday with Ray Lewis. Um, I, I know that John's a great interviewer. It's gonna be great. It sounds like a great like just studying like people who are very effective and when they had their moment of change. Exactly, and everybody can scr- subscribe to it right now. Go on, to on iTunes, what? Stitcher, Google Play. Go to brinkofmidnight.com. You can go. You can find it. And it's everywhere. not brink. It's brink. Brink. B r i n k of midnight. Boom. Boom. Thanks for coming on, man. Thanks. Johnny. Really appreciate it. B, yeah, and they right. can see you this. Uh, you got y'all can see me this freaking the, tomorrow. Well, tonight because you're gonna get this probably on Thursday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday at the Denver Comedy Works downtown. Come Denver, go out. and see my boy. Come out. Almost sold out. Harass him. Nice. Yeah, yeah, it's exciting. You guys are the best. Uh, yeah, both of you. Thank you. Trying, man. Brendan might be funnier than Brian now. I don't know. It's close. It's close. Hey, you I know, I am I appreciate furious. It. I'm just trying to get Brian to sell some tickets. And that's all just, it is, you motherfucker. Go get tickets, tfatgay.com. Uh, Brian and I will both be in Oklahoma May 20th. That's next Saturday. Cherokee dude. Casino. Cherokee, really? That's next Saturday. Ooh. Cherokee Casino, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Arkansas border. It's kind of a weird area. Cherokee Casino, tfatgay.com for all those tickets. I think that's it. Thanks for coming on, John. Thank you. This is The Final Kid. We're out.